my lovelies, and welcome to this slightly off-piste episode of the Fluff and Hammer. You may notice no cold open this time. I do apologise about that. That is my colleague Adam's uh, raison d'etre, and I'm not very good at it. So, uh, unfortunately, Adam is not going to be with us this evening as prior commitments, but he will be back very soon. But I am here with uh, Andy, Decayed Andy, as some of you may know him from Twitch. Hey, Andy, how you doing, man? Hello. Yeah, we can't step on the toes of greatness, you know. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. That's for him. Not. No. That's for it's, 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 uh, it's his magisteria, isn't it? I wouldn't yeah, even yeah, hundred percent. Wouldn't even dream of it, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. The closest I would get is maybe reading out some, uh, maybe like an extract of background from one of the codices or the the battle tomes. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe could be pushed to that, you know. <laughs> but mm-hmm. that's about it, really. I, I couldn't do it. I stumble over my words too much. Yeah, I, I can do it if I'm prepared. I can't do it in the way that, that Adam does it, where he, he kind of like acts it and he's quite good at it. You know, that's not my, that's really not my bag. I just, I ramble. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my that's my entire motif when it comes to podcasts i ramble so people know you're what they get so it's okay it's not like you're rambling <laughs> woo-woo or nonsense it's like it's got, I, it's I got content know. to it i don't know some have you seen the three four hour podcasts that are on my channel <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of woo-woo in there <laughs> as, oh, yeah. as long as it's fun woo-woo though that's the important <laughs> thing I, I will say that it's all fun yeah, yeah, that's good. We'll that's how that. it should it's be. All entertaining. <laughs> mm. We actually just did one. Um, one of my arm. Oh, I'm not even going to talk about it too much because if I do, I'll get back into it. But like, we did. Uh, my my colleague, my other colleague, Kit Power, and I. We did Imagica. Clive Barker's Imagica, ah. which is one of my one of my and indeed our favorite books ever written. Did like, they make a movie on that one? No, it's um, there have been multiple myriad efforts and every single one has failed. Mm. And when you read the book, it's not hard to see why. Oh, OK. How uh, how you would ever portray some of the stuff that's in that book. I mean, it is deliberately written, so you can't basically mm. the, the imagery in it is so ambiguous and profound and bizarre. I just don't know how you'd realize it and make it work. Yeah, kudos to anyone who gives it a go. Kudos because it it <laughs> the ideas in that book are insane. They and did see Lord of the Rings was unfilmable once. They did they did? But that's not that was never really true. Lord of the Rings, yeah. like, the, story, <laughs> the story is not unfilmable. It's just that they, they were just waiting for like cinematography and effects to catch up with the ambition yeah. of it. That's all. <laughs> the it, Magica is unfilmable. Mm. It is unfilmable. I just don't know. I mean, I, I've heard, I'm sure I remember hearing somewhere recently that there is a project underway at the moment to try and turn it into a film. Oh, who's doing it, do you know? I don't know. I have no idea. I just, I, I don't know how you do it. I mean, there's a, there's another favorite book of mine, Gormenghast by Mervyn Peake. Um, at the moment, apparently Neil Gaiman is trying to adapt that into like a, a series of two or three films oh again if you if anyone out there has ever read gormenghast good luck to him Hmm. good luck to him i mean gormenghast is amazing but how you turn it into a film (sighs) i have no idea i mean the bbc did a did you ever see the bbc adaptation of gormenghast from the early no no never very good very 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 good um it i don't know how they managed to do it because Gormenghast, uh, you know, I would say actually Gormenghast is more unfilmable than the Lord of the Rings is. Mm, okay. Because really, it is bonkers. It is such a strange story. Uh, but the BBC actually managed, they made a, ve- a very good fist of it. The The BBC adaptation of Gormenghast from the early 2000s is a very beautiful piece of work. And it is, you can sort of get it in most places now. You know, it's, it's available to stream, I believe, on Amazon. I believe there's like copies all over YouTube as well. Um, it's well worth finding. It's well mm. worth finding. It's one of those. I remember loving it when it came out and being because I was like twenty one. I think no, I was I was younger than that. I would have been nineteen when it came out and a bit more fiery than I am now. And I remember getting really angry because it didn't do well. Like people didn't watch it, and I was like, I, I remember being really nasty about it. Oh, it's because it's not fucking EastEnders, isn't it? You know, <laughs> it's because it's not like <laughs> silly at all bullshit. People won't watch it. You know, it's yeah. I, I, you well, know, yeah, pretty, that, pretty much. <laughs> part of me still believes that. You know, a part me still believes that but you know what really saddens me mm-hmm. it hit a year before the lord of the rings came out oh wow now 
if can you imagine if Gormenghast had come out in the bow wave of fantasy that followed after? Yeah, it probably would have got some more eyes on it at the very least, especially it, if it was like after, like directly after the first movie or the second movie. Probably when exactly. it was at its height, the second exactly. One. It would have yeah. done much better. The appetite would have been there for it. But mm. what what's really difficult to understand now is that before Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings adaptations came out, fantasy in cinema was a dead genre. I mean, it's not doing great these days, I would the, say, right? No, it's, uh, ironically, that is largely because of the, the darker part of the legacy of the Lord of the Rings films, which is after that, everyone tried to emulate it. Mm. And it just became saturated with bullshit. You know, with just terrible adaptations of books. Oh, um, definitely. But that's that was the situation that Gormenghast fell into. There just wasn't an appetite for fantasy at that time. Um, and it's such a shame because... One, if you look into like the literary history of British fantasy, there are kind of three arch texts that inform beyond like the mythological stuff that, that which is part and parcel of our culture here in the UK and mm. indeed across Europe. You know those those ancient mythologies. There's a lot of cross pollination. There's no in the same way. There's no no such thing as like a nation in and of itself. There is no such thing as an oral history in and of itself, or a, as a mythology in and of itself. You'll find influences and bits and pieces from all over the place. So the UK is like the the mythologies of the UK are informed by ancient Germanic and French and all sorts of stuff from all over the world. You know, mm -hmm. but in the, in that same way but what we call fantasy what we recognize as the genre of fantasy now is informed by roughly three ur texts and they are the lord of the rings obviously sure. which is probably obviously. the biggest obvious that's probably the biggest one because that is what established the the general assumptions and parameters of what we call fantasy today mm. the, the chronicles of narnia for better oh, or yeah. for better yeah. or worse you know and gormenghast now yeah. gormenghast is the the sort of redheaded redheaded stepchild of the three okay it's not as recognizable as the others it's not as accessible as the others but it is interestingly as important mm. you will find the echoes and the dna of gormenghast throughout what we call fantasy today and interestingly right. i would say out of all those texts it's my personal favorite of them wow it's it's such a strange series of books, Gormenghast. It's such a strange story and series of books. It is called fantasy. It is classified as fantasy. But you know what? It doesn't have anything in it that most people would recognize as fantasy. Mm. There are, there's no magic. There's no wizards. There's no goblins or elves or monsters. There's no magic at all. There's no miracles. There's no gods. The only thing that makes it a fantasy book is the fact that it's set in a fantastical kingdom, which is the kingdom of Gormenghast. Beyond that, everything is almost social realist. Okay. That is what makes it fascinating. That is what makes it so interesting it is such a wonderful story and i you know i know we're going again we're sort of rambling going off piece here this is a games workshop podcast by the way ladies and gentlemen <laughs> but yeah gormenghast is absolutely beautiful i would wow. highly highly recommend anyone out there to go and read it mm. especially because it is it, again it's the unspoken influence on fantasy you will see its resonance everywhere you'll see its resonance in neil gaiman and clive barker in china me elville oh my god you wouldn't believe terry pratt terry pratchett was a huge fan of gormenghast there's so much gormenghast in Discworld you wouldn't believe you just would not believe um but it's not as eminently recognizable as the others so if you say the lord obvious well the lord of the rings is an obvious one but sure. if you say you know the chronicles of narnia everybody knows the chronicles of narnia even anybody nobody even people who've never read the books you know know the chronicles of narnia gormenghast yeah. not so much Gormenghast not so much which is a yeah, great I hadn't heard of it when you mentioned it I, was like, I know most people haven't it's such a shame it's mm. it's a massively influential important piece of work Gormenghast and it is beautiful why do you think it's not as well known it's it's just not as accessible it's not as that's, accessible that's mainly it okay yeah it, that, that is largely it it's a very dense book it's phenomenally clever and i mean like it, it, the ideas that it plays with are huge like way bigger than anything you'll find in the other books it well, is, the, yeah but the, I, I guess the the other ones that um they're more of a 
I don't want to say a simple idea or a simple concept, but <laughs> they're, they're not the hardest ones to wrap your head around, really. No, it's, they're not. Uh, I mean, they, they, they are more classically mythological, so they're yeah. trying to do very sort of folkloric things. You know, that's their aim, really. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm Gorm- g- guessing this is and this is more of a, a complex no. kind of story. Gormenghast is a postmodern fantasy. That's that's mm. the best way I can describe it. It's a postmodern fantasy, and it deals with things like incredibly dense psychology. So all the characters, despite being archetypes in and of themselves, also have this incredibly ambiguous, strange psychology to them where they react and act in very peculiar, strange and unusual ways. And it makes them fascinating. You just can't, you can't, you love being around these characters when you're reading the book because they're so interesting. Hmm. They're so, so fascinating. Um, the story of Gormenghast, I mean, the story in and of itself is kind of simple too. You know, it's, it's about Gormenghast, which is this kingdom which has existed for millennia since time out of mind and it is obsessed the entire culture of gormenghast is rigid adherence to prescribed tradition so there are books and tomes and libraries in gormenghast about what people are supposed to do under every circumstance so on there are books that were entries that say like on this day of the month if the if the sky is sunny then people should do this you know it is that prescriptive it's a it's almost like a a totalitarian regime in a way but that's just the way it is that's the way the this culture operates everybody has their place everyone does as they're expected to do and it's the way those systems slowly drive people mad right and into that very rigid structure you have these two elements dropping there's a new uh, i suppose it's a new prince they're called the they're called um, the groans the ruling family of Gormenghast, they're called the Groans, and a new prince is born named Titus, and he obviously upsets the status quo a little bit. And there's also this kitchen boy, this boy who's born to serve in the hell of Gormenghast kitchens, who escapes from the kitchens and starts to ascend through the ranks of Gormenghast, destabilizing it as he goes. He's kind of like the the dark revolutionary of Gormenghast named Steerpike. And it's about how these two, between them, kind of undo what is known as Gormenghast. It's real. It's just brilliant. It's a wonderful piece of work. Highly, highly, highly recommended. But yeah, Warhammer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Warhammer. Have you been doing any, any any hobby at all, Andy? Uh, not to a huge degree. I've just been uh, using a few of the speed paints, the army speed paint paints, and very, very very slowly working on the uh rubric marines that i've got I'm, oh. i've got i got a box i've got a uh a, like 10 that i've done in blue which i'll need to take back and um you know goo them up and get the paint off them mm-hmm. uh, so i can get them in red you're gonna get uh, you're going for the red are you yeah i like the classic 30k mm-hmm. thousand suns look oh the it, uh the the old prospero thousand suns yeah yeah because i know there is technically a chapter of the thousand suns in the book I, yeah, I can't remember what they're called but they they have a similar color scheme to absolutely that, yeah yeah they they kept like the old colors of prospero yeah. the old legion colors yeah yeah I, I i like that color scheme i think it works well it is very um, cool i mean I, I must admit a thousand suns they do look good in red they do yeah look good in red. not to say they don't look good in blue they look good no in blue too. i mean they aesthetically they're definitely one of my favorite legions that's for damn sure i think they look amazing when they're you know when they're all painted up in their regalia they look absolutely beautiful yeah i but, think they just generally work in any color scheme i think yeah. those models just uh I, I think in some ways they're more impressive than the even the newer just chaos space marine models because mm-hmm. they have such um ornate design to them they do, yeah. they don't they're not like the the previous ones where they're with the plastic kits where you then stuck uh, the metal bits on them oh, which the just old, looked yeah. like yeah they just looked <laughs> like um normal co- uh, chaos space marines playing egyptians they yes. didn't really look like thousand suns while these guys look like thousand suns oh my God, the old 3.5 thousand suns they were they were released with the 3.5 codex i remember them yeah yeah the the actual metal ones i think before them were a little bit nicer because oh, they, they were weren't just an add-on kit no, they were ancient. They the they were. before that kit, there was no real dedicated Thousand Suns kit. They were just <laughs> like the individual metal miniatures from the Rogue Trader days. So my God, they were old. Like in Second Ed, there was no dedicated model at all. 
for the thousands. Mm. Not one. I mean, I'm not. I'm not shocked. I will say, <laughs> I would like to say, uh, I would like to see like a nod to that era's thousands and sorcery. You know, the one that had. Um, Almost like the Egyptian death mask look to it. Oh yes, which they. I'd, actually, I'd like to have uh, that again. Yeah, I mean they reproduced him for uh, made to order a few years ago, and I did get him. Was he resin? He's no, he's metal. Really? Oh my god! Yeah. No, he's oh metal. God. He's white metal. Um, I've got him upstairs in his pack still. I've got a. I'm going to put him on a disc. Oh hell yeah! Why I'm going to put him on a disc and have him as an exalted. Obviously, I might even because he's got like, the, you know the the way he's got the skull helmet and the 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 crest is kind of like cr- like a crown like thing. It looks a bit like Nazgûli. I'm going to hmm. put. I'm going to because my you know my thousand sons have got the eyes modelled over them. That's I'm going right. to model loads of the eyes over his crest. I think that'll look rather cool. That wouldn't be bad. I think I'd look rather cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love that miniature. There were three Chaos Space Marine Sorcerers released in metal for the oh, second I know Ed, the ones. Thousand Suns Codex. And they were they're all really good sculpts. They were mm, really yeah. good. it was way back when thousand when sorcerers were a little bit more generic. You know, yes. they didn't really have like a, an affiliation to a particular chaos god back then. You just sort mm. of bought them and then whatever mark they had, they had, you know? I think um, around the same time, the the fancy ones had some really nice designs to them as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they they had some really. I mean, they were single pose, they were metal, mm-hmm. and there was not much you could do with them. But they they had a, a a nice distinct look to them. Not to say the ones now don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, the right the the sort the exalted sorcerers you can get now are fantastic. Oh, that's so nice. I love that kit. I yeah. that that exalted sorcerer kit. I absolutely adore. But I definitely would like to see. You know, maybe some nods to the older designs because mm-hmm. you know, I, I we have them for other chapters and whatnot, and mm-hmm. uh, not chapters, but for other races. So it'd be nice yeah. to see a bit more touching on on the the, the old school history every now and again, even mm-hmm. if it is just like a head that you it can seems throw like away or whatnot. Well, they do do that with so, with the some. the chaos sorcerers that come from the generic chaos space marines. Yeah. More. So there yeah. was um, a chaos space marine sorcerer released with psychic awakening a few years back and he has lots of nods to those second dead sculpts on him so he's got mm. like you know that classic um chaos sorcerer backpack where the the two arms are like serpent heads yes that's the, I, I that, love that one he's got that going on and mm. whatnot he's a lovely sorcerer i'm gonna make him into a thousand sun as well he's gonna be Hell an expected yeah. sorcerer i've got like 12 sorcerers in my thousand sons now <laughs> yeah i'm never gonna field that many you can't field that many but oh, sure. it's nice to have them yeah, well, here's the thing, I suppose. You could say, like, uh, how, how do you define your exalted sorcerers from your sorcerers? My exalted sorcerers are on discs. That is that the only difference? Because yeah. otherwise, like, it's just a sorcerer, isn't it? Like, yeah, I they're a little bit more ornate. What I've done yes. with my normal, because of the background of my Shattered Sons, the normal sorcerers tend, they're not all of them, but they tend to be sorcerers that have been drawn in to the Shattered from other legions. They're not technically mm. Thousand Sons. So my generic sorcerers are like one of them. He's converted heavily from the librarian, the Dark Angels librarian, from uh, an old, 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 from the kit that came out at the beginning of 8th Ed. Um, that had the it had no it wasn't even then it was f- it was when you had the crimson slaughter versus the dark angels I can't da- oh, was it called dark awakening or something like that I can't even remember It'll be what, something what, I'm sure what yeah. the box set was called but there was a like a dark angels librarian in that and mm. I've massively converted him into a into a, a chaos sorcerer from my thousand sons oh. and when I say massively I mean like scraped off all the dark angels and imperial iconography <laughs> sculpted <laughs> screaming faces into his arms armor and eyes all over his cloak giving him a big old like mutated claw from made from like night goblin spider legs and wow all sorts of crap you wouldn't believe what i've done to that miniature to make it look like a like a chaos sorcerer it's ridiculous you can do some crazy stuff with just like um uh, a knife and lots of yeah. bits the problem is do you have a lot of bits i i've got a like, ridiculous amount of bits yeah yeah, the, the, have you ever run into the thing of like I don't have the bits I want? Like you have an idea of what you want to do, but you don't yeah. have the right bits for them, and you're like, shit. Well, the problem I fall into is because I've got so many bits, it's trying to find where they are. 
Oh no! So, <laughs> what? Have you not where? got them organised? Oh pff, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not organised in my hobbying. <laughs> I just, it's chaos. It's I, you know, I, I kind of, you know, the, the theme fits the actual hobby itself. Uh, it's organised chaos. I don't do it regularly because I don't have the time and like mm. the energy. I find the energy that the hobbying takes, it, it tends to, for some reason, it, it seems to come from the same source that I do with my writing, you know? It's that yes. creative energy. So I don't always have the the get up and go to do it. I will, mm. you know, totally admit that. Um, and because it's been such a heavy period for the writing recently, I haven't really done much hobbying lately. Um, but yeah no no it tends to be very like artistic when it when i sit down and do it i just like oh I'll, i've got these bits i'll just sort of like glue them together and see what happens and <laughs> oh i want to do this it's, it, it it is very very disorganized i do not have plans for what i do it, it just it's whatever works in the sp in the spur of the moment to be <laughs> honest hey if it works it works it does tend to i mean i'm yeah you know, I'm quite pleased with most of my conversions. I've got to say, my my uh, my exalteds are all really cool. I, I like them all. One of them is um, I put pictures of, I believe, a long time ago on the Fluff and Hammer page. One of my my chief exalted, I think, the one that's going to be like the overlord of my shattered sons. He's made from the body of a gaunt summoner. Ah. So it's got that very skinny body of the gaunt summoner with one of the crested helmets of an exalted sorcerer and oh, the right. backpack from an exalted sorcerer as well. And, it, and I've stuck him on a disc and it works really, really well. I saw someone do something similar with that, uh, that body, the, the, uh, the, what's it called? The channeler? Oh, the gaunt summoner. Yeah. The gaunt summoner. And the, uh, t they gave it Arkan's head. Uh, and give it a few other little bits here and there to to turn it into some kind of floaty necromancer, which looks pretty yeah. fancy. I can see that working really well. It's a yeah. very cool little kit that actually, and it it does work for the Thousand Sons. You see, with the with the sorcerers, they are you have to bear in mind they are the most mutated Chaos Space Marines out there. <laughs> They've got like the raw power of Zeech flowing through them, who is the god of change, and they embrace it. You know, they mm. bring it on themselves. So you know. I mean, there's that guy. Have you read the the Codex, the Ninth Ed Codex? No, I haven't had the chance. Uh, had the chance to read it. I there's, have. I just haven't read it. There's an awesome section where it tells you about each of the different cults in the Thousand Sons, mm. the nine cults that are that are sort of like define the Thousand Sons insofar as they have any kind of definition at all, and it describes a character from each of those cults like an exalted sorcerer from each of those cults, a prominent figure. And the one from the cult of mutation is the gross. Three armed something. He's got like, um, what they he looks or something he, like that. Oh, the one from the Cult of Mutation. He looks like a thousand, so like a rubrique, like a white rubrique. Hmm. But there are bits of like mutated flesh coming out of the joints and flowing out. And apparently inside his armor, he is just a roiling mass of mutation. He's just raw change, just flowing through this armor. And the only way he can maintain any kind of definition is inside the suit of armor. Sounds really uncomfortable. It does, done it? But it's yeah. really cool. <laughs> it's really, the ones I think the ones you're talking about are the um, I think they are the they are the members of the cult of scheming and they're three sorcerers that are bound as one. Yeah, I think they have a fancy name, but I can't remember. I can't quite remember what their name yeah. is. But I they, think they all have three arms as well. Or that's something it. Like They've that. all got three arms and their shtick is that they are their souls are united in the warp. Mm, so okay. whatever one thinks and does, the other can think the others. Ah. Know, basically. And interestingly, that is derived from a mechanic in the actual in the actual codex. You can do that. There is, um, you know, the um, cabal points that you can spend to yes. supercharge your psychic powers of different effects. Yeah. One of those effects is that you can spend so many cabal points in your psychic phase so that a sorcerer can cast a psychic power that another sorcerer in your army knows, but it doesn't. So, because they're linked psychically, mm. which is brilliant. I mean, it's such a useful ability that is. It's unbelievable. So, <laughs> if you needed a particular psychic power in a particular area of the battlefield, but the sorcerer who is there doesn't know it, mm. but another sorcerer nearby does, you can spend the cabal points so that the sorcerer you need could use that psychic power. Oh. It's absolutely brilliant. It's such a clever 
interesting you can sort of maneuver the enemy into these massive gridlocks of psychic holocaust if you're clever enough mm, right that is what i've noticed with the thousand suns codex it's really clever i mean it is such a cool codex i just think it's a shame that so uh, quite a few of the the uh, more bigger kits are <laughs> Not super easy to get because no. they're not in stores. They're not in stores, no, which is a bit of a pain, to be honest. Yeah. But you know, like the the new the the one that's probably you could have on the stores still is the the Vortex Beast. Ah, uh, the Mutalith, yeah, that's I love it. Him. Yeah, you it, like that still looks like a good model. I'm just surprised it isn't one. being sold in stores. Like yeah, you like can get it online, but that's it. Because it is a really cool piece of kit. That is, it is. It's great. It looks very Bloodborne. Very, it very doesn't it board. doesn't it just well that that was designed when they were starting to sort of like take influence from the FromSoft games. Yeah, That's it looks like, like uh, the Bloodstar Beast. Yeah, you say? doesn't it just? Yeah, doesn't 100%. it just? With a little bit of like Lovecraft thrown in, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> With the tentacles, obviously. Do you have one? Well, I um, I'm Utilef. Yeah, I've got the kit. <laughs> I've got the oh, kit. Oh, okay, you haven't built it yet. Okay. <laughs> I've tried to think of how to do it in a way that I want to do it because, like, I don't want my mutilus to look like all everybody else's mutilus because they, they are supposed to be unique. Right. Could you yeah, make it are... like the thing and have like heads coming out of the, the mouth That's, or something? What, what I'm thinking is getting like, you know, the, the eternal Slanesh spell that's the mirror. Oh, yeah. I kind of want to have the Mutalith holding that in its tendrils and having, yeah. like, salts coming out. Or okay. Something like that. So maybe that's... get, like, some night horn uh, or yeah. some spirit hosts or something and stick that's them through that. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Just to, just to give it a little bit of um, uniqueness. Because, of course, Mutalith Vortex Beasts are... They're all unique. No two of them are the same. They're like big chaos spawn, basically, you know. Mm, so having sense. a standardized kit for them doesn't necessarily make sense you know you sure i like the idea of converting a big one out of all sorts of chicanery and, and mm. i want two as well i mean like they're <laughs> bloody good they're really yeah. they are like they're mortal wound dealers ultimately yeah i i hear if you want like heavy like non non-psychic damage things <laughs> it's like the the mutilist gives you kind of way forward they're the big boys basically you, you, yeah you can just not have a tank and have that instead and exactly, it'll do your yeah. job. Well, it's a good monster. It does a lot of damage on its own with just its weapons, you know, just its like mm. claws and its tentacles. It's a really good, big, heavy, durable monster. But its abilities to inflict mortal wounds are amazing. So you can pick two uh, abilities every turn to use and each one does a different effect. Like one of them is called Warp Flare and it does so many mortal wounds to all <laughs> units within range. Another one is like a focused <laughs> beam that does more mortal wounds on a single target wow. it's very good if i was facing tau i would so take like two mutilith vortex beasts because it would it, they would be fantastic against tau uh, i imagine they can uh, because of the size they probably can absorb a, a decent amount of damage as well they but can. well from certain tau things not from yeah, like not the... from all of them. Yeah, not from the the Night Killer unit, whatever that one was called. The um, no, I mean I've got the Tau Codex, and yeah, I can see why people are worried about it. It does have, you know, it is a it's a pretty good codex, but I'm not. I think again, we're seeing a little bit of internet hyperbole going on here, you know. As, well, as I don't think it's it, you know, you see the numbers, and when you just see the raw numbers, you can see right. why people are suspecting things yes, and getting concerned. Can, but I once you get in game and you then see the statistics, it might change, or yeah. you know, might be confirmed. I mean, Who knows, right? Don't get me wrong; it is a good codex, and they are at long range. They're very tough. They are mm. very, very, very tough. But there are counters to them. I mean, they're not good in close combat. They're crap in close combat. You know, the Thousand yeah. Suns could do that. I mean, the, you know, the Thousand Suns are not great in close combat, but the Thousand Suns could, could beat the hell out of them for the most part. Mm. You know, there, there's exceptions. There are the odd unit that's okay in close combat. But that's about... I mean, actually, the you, armies like the Thousand Suns and like the Grey Knights that have got high numbers of invulnerable saves, and I mean really high numbers of invulnerable saves, and can also deal a lot of mortal wounds in one round are going to be the bane of town. The absolute bane of town. Also, psychic heavy armies, because they've got no psychic defense or capability at all. Yeah. Like, none. Absolutely none. So, you know, the, the Thousand Suns and the Grey Knights are, are, are your go-to for defeating yeah, yeah. the town. Also, the Death, counters, Death, kind of Death Guard. Death Guard are very good against the, them. The tanks. Because 
Yeah, well, they're durable. You know, yeah, Death yeah, Guard yeah. are really durable. Um, I watched a battle report when the Tau Codex just came out where it was Tau versus Death Guard and the Death Guard player took Mortarion and wanted to see how much he could stand up to from the Tau battle line. So he just flew him directly at the Tau <laughs> battle line. And with his, you know, with psychic powers and whatnot, he took out quite a few of those Tau units. And then the entire Tau army opened up on him, mm. just on Mortarion. And there was some really nasty weapons having a go at him here. There were rail guns, there were all sorts. He took a lot of wounds, but you know what? He survived it. Yeah. On his own, that was. He survived it. So, you know... It's it's one of those things, isn't it? That it, it it does tend to happen. You do tend to have this like slightly hysterical moment when new codices hit, and there's like numbers that people don't like, and then people get over it. The Drakari are the same, right? Mm. The Drakari are the same. That is a bloody good codex, and it's still a really good codex, even with all the the attempts to to sort of tone it down that is that have uh, you know that Games Workshop have undertaken. It's still a really good killer codex, and it's still at the top of all the tawny leagues at the <laughs> moment. It is still right up there. But you know what? There are counters to them. They're dead fragile. Sure. They're they're not that difficult to start deal. If you can, if you can, sort of carry them off kilter early game if you can disrupt the uh the drakari players battle plan they're not going to get it together again they're just not because they're not the kind of army that regroups easily whereas you know your your, your heavier smaller more elite armies like like your your space marines your thousand sons your death guard your custodies they are much more durable in that regard you know they can take a licking and then sort of regroup themselves and come back mm. that's that's the danger of the drakari they need to hit hard early game which that you know they are equipped to do they can you know when if the drakari player can get their shit together and hit you hard early on and destabilize your line that's what they do and when they do it they do it so well in fact there's probably barring maybe the new eldari codex there's probably not an army that does it as well as the drakari do they're a destabilizing army it's the way yeah, they work glass cannon kind of idea yeah that's exactly bogged down, which is why the the death guard are a good counter to them exactly exactly yeah. that they are total glass cannon i mean don't get me wrong it's a heavy cannon <laughs> The amount of just raw damage they can put out and the mobility of it is unbelievable. But you can understand why people get uh, concerned with these numbers because you never want to be a player who goes up against an army and goes, oh, I, I lose. No, you, know, you, don't. you, you don't want that. And no. th there are games, video games that are like that, where mm -hmm. if you pick a certain character, you just win. Yeah, uh, and it's it was the same for GW at one point as well, wasn't it? it I was. can't remember which edition it was where you just go, oh, well, I've got this army, I win, and no one likes number. playing the person it who has built an army like that as well. Because it's not yeah. just say like the the uh, the uh, the Dark Eldar who are like mm -hmm. that at the moment. There are certain other armies I know that you can build which are just, oh, I have this army, I just win. It's like yeah. no one wants to fight that army. They That's are... no fun. No, absolutely not. And like the, they are. It seems to me one of the the watchwords they are trying now is they are really trying to tone down the killer armies. They don't yeah. seem to. They are actually looking at player feedback and they are adapting what's out there. You know, to make sure mm. that they're not the killer armies, and that you know they're generally quite successful. I do think a lot of the Drakari stuff. You know, it's not. It's not what people seem to think. It's not that they have the best codex out there. It is a really good codex. It's just that, quite frankly, space... It, this is going to sound terrible, but loyalist Space Marine players have had it their own way for like five editions. <laughs> that's the truth of the matter. They've had the best of everything, right? And that's not the case anymore. You and think I that think those kind of players, in generally, of course, those players generally don't like not having the spotlight on them all it, the time. It's not. It's not like those players. It's like a certain subset of those of course, players that yeah. are, who don't like the fact that they don't have the auto win button anymore, and yeah. the fact that they are not the top of the tournament leagues anymore, and that there's a Xenos race out there that's slightly better. You know that that can or that can that can actually stand up to them, you know? And I mean, um, I guess that mentality kind of makes sense because GW for the longest time has been feeding. Yes. Um, they, it's like, who gets new range all the time first? It's yeah. the Space Marine players who always gets a new 
it's the lieutenant it's it's the space yeah, marine place i get it i do get so it but it, it's, it's I, like the, it's like the favored child now being mm-hmm. told like no no we're gonna play with timmy today yeah, and the, the, I that think, child's like yeah, whoa what's I do happening i think that's a lot of it to be honest yeah. i do think that's a lot of the mentality because i've got you know Maybe, I, I've, yeah. I've got the drakari codex and it's really good it is a really really good codex you can make some really fun really interesting very effective army lists from it but you know i play other armies as well and i've looked at building counters to drakari and it ain't that hard yeah Unless especially fair, not it, especially how, how not often have the Drakari been on top right i mean last edition they were a joke seventh edition they were a joke sixth the, edition they were all right you know what edition was they were they first released because i don't oh, think they fifth. were good then fifth, fifth were they good they then were, they were all right in fifth okay. they were okay even but with was... that tiny tiny codex which was like five oh, pages long oh you mean the original oh that was third ed that was the third original ed. when they were dark elder <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that yeah. was that was third ed and that was shit yeah that i thought so actually, I, was, I thought that was pretty that bad. <laughs> was a terrible codex it was the first codex released for third ed it was like the poster child for third ed because mm. the dark elder were new back then that's right uh, it was the new race they were like the poster child antagonists for it that was them which... and the necrons were slightly before or after the, the necrons were introduced slightly before they were introduced before. towards okay. the very end of uh, second ed but they mm. weren't a full army list back then they were like a white dwarf army list oh that's right yeah. the miniatures were all like big blocky metal and there were only like four units maximum that they could take um it wasn't until well into third ed that they had their first proper codex Mm, okay well into third ed and they were pretty good you know they they were very good actually um just not very interesting because all necron (laughs) armies look the same all Mm. necron armies look the same back then because they just didn't have the range of units that they have now hmm it was like one troop choice, which was Necron Warriors, and no, there was, there was they had Immortals as well. They had oh, Immortals, troop, but they, the immortals, they were in, the weird bike. Thing they were the... in the elite slot, though. Ah, uh, oh, I see. What you're immortals saying. back okay. then were in the elite slot. They were not right. troops. They are troops now. I thought you just meant out. Like, that was their entire range. They just had the normal oh, no, Necron no, Warriors. No, no, no. Like, they oh, had no. no, no, no. They had they had back then. They had. Uh, I mean, I can actually list what they had. They had the Immortals. They had the Destroyers. They oh. had. The Necron yeah, Lord, okay. they had the two Catan, the Nightbringer and the Deceiver, and they had the Monolith. And they also had the the Scarabs. Yes, the big that ones. No, the, the little t- the tank bomb scarab. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. That was no, no, they had the de- the jet bikers. Oh no, was that the destroyer? Was destroyers. the jet bikers yeah, destroyers? The jet bikers became the metal ones. destroyers. Yeah. <laughs> the jet bikers kind of morphed into the destroyers later mm. on. But that was it. That was all they had. It was a very limited range. Uh, and that, that was kind of what characterized them back then. Mm, yeah. That was, you know, they were an easy put to get to put together army because you, there were only <laughs> there was only like one configuration for them. Well, easy. I mean, they were mostly metal, so it's not like yeah. the most friendly army for a kid to get into and start <laughs> building. But yeah, in terms of like your, your composition of an army, it's like, oh, we've, yeah. we've only got like six units to pick from. That'll do. Mm hmm. I mean, they were good. I mean, in Second Ed, with like the metal ones when they were first released, they were pretty good. Their firepower was amazing. They could actually mm. like take out things like Lehman Rust tanks and whatnot. The basic <laughs> troopers could with their gorse cannons. It's pretty, it's pretty good. sick. Yeah, that's that, that's uh, kind of what how the Necrons were built up. And yeah, maybe maybe they were too powerful, which is why they kind of rolled them back. Maybe, maybe so. Yeah, I mean, they they also wanted to define them a little bit more, make them more of like an active race in the universe, which is why they changed so much later on. Mm. And they did. I mean, my God, when they got their full release, they changed a lot. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, there weren't even the Catan back in when they were originally released. That wasn't even a concept. That's right. Yeah. They were just like robots they were just robot skeleton men yeah, that's it yeah. don't worry about it their whole shtick was that they they repaired themselves they had they even had like the terminator rule will be back <laughs> that's what it was called that was what the rule was called will be back they repaired themselves when they when they got shot down you didn't remove the miniature you rolled a dice and on a certain roll they got back up mm. it was kind of simple really i remember the artwork for that as well where it looked like they were all rusty turning yeah. to rust. that was a good bit of art that was cool, yeah. That was way back when, of course. Yeah. They're a bit different now. Yeah, yeah. Long ago. Little, I mean, I to be fair, I do prefer the present day incarnation of the Necrons. Yeah, I mean, visually they're a lot better, obviously, and now oh, yeah. and story wise, they've got oh, more to them. 
Wow. And also, they're just more dynamic now as well, you know, introducing the whole notion that there are still personalities amongst the Necrons, which there never used to be, mm. <laughs> you know, that there are still, there are like um, characters who are in more advanced bodies who actually have something of their old characters still. That's nice. I really like that. I still wish some of those characters would get new uh, plastic minis. The yeah. ones are all stuck in resin mode at the yeah. moment. Yeah, I'd they, love they need I an mean, update. Trazin they need to do Trazin and Orican they need to mm -hmm. do because they you know people love those characters because of the books right oh definitely yeah so those two definitely need doing and Trazin he's always in the background he seems to be turning up all the bloody time in all the campaigns it's, and whatnot you know everybody likes him that's why <laughs> yeah he's fun right everybody yeah. likes Trazin. you know I, I've said it before and I'll say it again they need to do a miniature of that artwork that appears in the codex where he's slumped on his big throne Mm, that'd be great. That's what I want. That's the miniature I want. <laughs> you, so you'd have him like, uh, oh, what's the DC character? Metron? Is that his name? The guy who's stuck on the chair? Oh! Who, who looks you, at the big uh, wall, whatever that oh, is? Um, you know what I mean? About, uh, what, the Marvel character? Modok? No, no, not Modok. He's a DC character. Oh, he protects uh, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, what's it, the anti-life equation. Oh! Um, I, uh, Metron. I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is Metron. I'll send you an image of him. I like that. I yeah, one. I love that idea. I just, I just love how, I love how lazy he looks mm. in that artwork, and that suits Trazin down to the ground, doesn't it? Yeah, but so, bored, tired. Yeah, bored. He's that's that's what I like about him. He is so bored, and he's you know he's seen everything, hasn't he? You know, he's like he's he's an atemporal Necron, isn't he? You know, mm, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I kind of yeah. I love the idea. Or maybe one day we'll get him. Maybe, maybe, hopefully. maybe. Be a nice. couple of the characters could do with updating. I mean, especially we've, we've only got well, what two characters? We've got Zarak and we've got um, Illumino Zaras, and that's it. Yeah, no mm -hmm. one else. He's we've got the 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 Storm uh, Fist as well. Whatever his name is oh, again, um, Imotech. Im Imotech, Imotech. Yeah, and I think we need him so we can have a, an internal conflict with the Necrons Def at some point. Definitely, because Imotech is the other power in the Necrons, isn't he? He's the That's other right. big guy. You know, he in fact he was before Zarek came back. He was like the the equivalent of Marnius Kalgar or mm. Abaddon mm. the Spoiler or Eldred Ultron. You know, that big character who is organizing the Necrons. Yeah. And I like his attitude as well. I really do. I like the way he is, where he's like, you know, Zarek, fuck him. <laughs> he, he he first of all he led us to this living damnation you know he condemned our entire species and then he he buggered off mm. when it was done he ran away we're the ones that have like r resurrected our empire we're the ones who are exterminating the alien vermin now mm. so and then, and then he wants to come back and like reclaim his throne i don't think so <laughs> I like him a tech. I like him a lot, actually. I think of, you know, but if it's a, if it's a choice between Zarek and Imatech, I'm on Team Imatech. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm on Team Imatech, definitely. I also like his abilities in game. I mean, he's called the Storm Lord, and he can actually call down like a storm. Yeah, yeah, I that's pretty can cool. Do that, which is pretty. It's not magic, though. No, it's no, no. it's not magic. No, no, no. 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 They don't, they don't <laughs> go in for that. No, no they no. don't go in for magic. No, no, no. <laughs> it's technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the Drakari, you know, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. A lot of their abilities are basically magical, but they're not. They're they're technological. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, it's it's some sort of weird gene uh splicing or whatever. I mean, that's another one actually that we desperately need. The Drakari need a Lord of War version of Azdrabael Vect. Did they have like a leader or character version of a human uh homunculus? Oh, Urian. Yeah, Urian Rakarth. Yeah, he's still oh, there. Is he's there like, is he a good model at the moment, or is he like yeah, an oldie? He's, he's 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 pretty old. He's from when he's from that fifth ed re-release of them. You know when they changed oh, wow. completely, but it's still a bloody good miniature. It really mm. works well. Um, it's a very you, you wouldn't say no to like a, a redo like Fa uh, Fabi Bill got. No, right. absolutely not. But it's still you know the um, it's doable. It's workable. It's, yeah, it's perfectly workable. To be honest, yeah. it's such a, it was such a good miniature when it was released. 
that it kind of stands up to be honest it's okay. it's pretty damn good but they used to have way back when i mean this is like way back at the beginning back in third ed they did have a model of asdrabael vect the supreme overlord of comora that was the when he was big, on the um the, 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 the ship right? right the days of destruction that's right yeah. yeah um it was crap it was a very bad miniature indeed but they <laughs> had him you know asdrabael is like the the big character in the Drukhari. He is the one, but he hasn't been playable for what, three, four, maybe five? Uh, no, four, it would be four different versions of the game now. Mm. Which is a real shame. What, because he is wait. active, you know, he's not, he is not the kind of character who sit, he, I mean, he is a, he's a, like the supreme schemer. He does sit behind the, the, the scenes and like plot and plan, but he does get his hands dirty as well. He gets involved. Oh, he likes to have fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely, he's a Drakari, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, can you imagine like a big Lord of War version of him now that's similar to Zarek on his, on his big thing, his dais? Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. That'd be great great wouldn't it and the yeah. drakari kind of need that to be honest they haven't got a big lord of war they could give him a little uh, table and a flesh lamp as well with like an eye on it <laughs> and a little mouth. that would be fun you could do a lot of really stupid fun things with him because he's a drakari well Dr- yeah i mean you can get away with a lot with the drakari because their gene craft is such that they they can do pretty much what they like to be honest you know what you know what i'd like to see you do george uh, if you had the time which you don't but let's let's pretend <laughs> you do in a fictional world i'd like you to buy the zarak figure obviously get rid of the necron stuff mm-hmm. and then re-sculpt uh that that uh platform to be like oh, a, oh. a little throne so you'd sculpt over the the floor with like a carpet but you'd make the fl- carpet like uh, the, yes. the, t- the the turned up part of the insides of your skin so it'd be all red <laughs> and gooey and, and then so you give him a little like... table and then the, a, a chair made of arms and legs oh, severed probably. arms and legs and stuff like that and then the flesh lamp obviously <laughs> obviously yeah and then a slave girl that's made of like um tongues she's not actually a flesh girl <laughs> a slave girl it's just a lady made out of full tongues yeah, that's that. That sounds brilliant. Actually, yeah. that's the kind of thing your Drakari overlord would go for. To be honest, yeah, yeah. yeah. You need someone who's really good at sculpting green stuff to do mm-hmm. this. And, and there are people I, out there who could. That I know, right? I, I've, I, I, the, uh, you know, envy is unbelievable. The people who I can know. do this really well. It's like, yeah. wow, wow. I'm so impressed with some of the modelers and sculptors and painters out there. Mm. But I don't, I don't understand why Asdrabael has never come back. He's in the background. Like he's Maybe he's one of those back. characters who's... I don't want to say who's too important, but you remember how like the Lords of Terror don't really have models. Right, right. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe that's the idea, that he's like that. He's like a right. big boy, so don't do him. He's or he's too, too important yeah. in some ways. That's, yeah, I suppose that's true, yeah. I mean, this is just the like me fishing. Is, there, might not be, there might not be a the reason. The thing is, though, your, your Drakari are immortal. Even hmm. when, they're di- when they die, when they're shot down on the battlefield, all of them, including even the lesser ones, they have um, deals with the Hemunculi, you know, the flesh crafters of the Drakari. Sure. And their souls are recaptured and they, they're sucked back into Comora and they are regrown. Their bodies are regrown in the, 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 the flesh vats of the homunculi. They actually can't die unless they piss a homunculi off. <laughs> then, uh, then, I mean, to, to be fair, that, that was my like story reason. The real, <laughs> like my, my business reason would be the Drakari haven't had a refresh. So fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> there's the Enos race fuck him we give him your codex yeah. now piss off that yeah, would be right. it like the cow you got a big robot upgrade so fuck off you don't yeah, need yeah, anything right. new I mean that that the, the, the again the, the stereotypical like what's the business reason that's probably the reason unfortunately yeah, it, it we're focusing is. on chaos space marines later on in the year so you'll be happy with that and that, I mean, the rumors do seem like that is true, doesn't it? I mean, there's a well, lot. There's a lot of rumors out there at the moment about what's happening with chaos. So I mean, we haven't had the the codex for them. We've had this uh, box between the mm-hmm. the chaos uh, space marines and the Eldari space space pirates. So it's like we've had the Eldar update. So yep. I think that ties into that box set technically in a, in a weird way. So again, in like fact, you say, it wouldn't be a huge shock that we got a space mean, marine one. The number chaos. of Chaos Space Marine releases at the moment are suspicious, aren't they? So they've yeah, had exactly. the, the battle box that has got the the Eldari and that the um, the force led by the new Warpsmith. 
That's right. And then there's the Nakmon Gauntlet Kill Team box that's, that's got right. the new Chaos Space Marines and the Corsairs in it. Mm-hmm. And those new Chaos Space Marines, everything on those miniatures ties in with what the rumor mongers are saying. Oh, so 100%, 100%. there's like there's a, this rumor monger over on the Bolter and Chainsword forum who seems to have some connection to Games Workshop, and he has listed this stuff. This was long before there was anything about the Nakmon Gauntlet stuff that talked about the new Chaos Space Marines having like a um, a book, like a like a um, a magical tome that could turn a Chaos Space Marine unit into a limited form of Psyker. That's in there. He talked mm. about how there's like a minor possessed character in each chaos space marine unit that's in there he yeah. talked about how the uh, chaos space marine units in the new chaos space marine codex are going to be able to be upgraded with like a big berserker axe that's in there so mm. it's like hmm he talked about how your chaos aspiring champions and your your basic chaos space marine units are now going to be upgraded with like demon swords that's, <laughs> that's in there. In there. <laughs> yeah yep. it's like hmm i wonder how you know i wonder how much of what he's telling us he actually is on point because a lot of it does seem to to tie in you know at the very least it ties into this um, yeah one would I, assume it probably tie because i can't imagine that these guys won't be playable in well, the main course. game so th- they have to have rules in conjunction yeah. with these figures so they have to have makes rules, sense so it does yeah. make a great deal of sense and if what he's saying is true the chaos space Man codex is going to be a blinder yeah, it's it's going to be big as well. It's yeah. probably going to be like the. Uh, do you have the Eldari Codex? I've ordered it. It hasn't oh. been. Re- how hasn't many pages? Released. Do you know how many pages it is? It's massive. It's the same. It's it about big. the same size as the Space Marine Codex. Yeah. So it's huge. So one can assume that a Chaos Space Marine book would probably be of that size as well, because obviously, it's... like um, the Thousand Suns one is in comparison quite small yeah, compared wow. to them, which makes sense because it's it, only it makes one. sense. It's it's like a more like the it's a funny thing the codices like the thousand sons and the death gods sit outside the mainstream of codices like mm. the custodies and the gray knights do because they're very refined they're very focused down on yeah they're a specialized group you yeah know, you have limited numbers of stuff yeah. which makes perfect sense insofar as i'm concerned you know um and given that like the mutability of those codices is really good you can build like lots of different types of army within that particular archetype which i'm all for you know sure um, but yeah, the Chaos Space Marine Codex is going to have to be absolutely huge because it's going to have to deal with the Legions and the Renegade Warbands and all the different versions of that, right? And uh, I guess they'll probably have like a really basic version of the Thousand Sons Death Guard. It's, um, it's not going to have the Thousand Sons of the Death Guard. It is, is going to have... No, it's going to have like... Apparently there's a system in it whereby... Because you've always been able to take the basic cult marines as part of a Chaos Space Marine army, there's hmm. going to be a system whereby you can take rubric A and Plague Marine units in the Chaos uh, Space Marines as my, a part of a Chaos Space Marine army. Right, the reason I thought that they might, they might do that is because... Uh, Obviously, like we don't have the world eaters yet, and nope. we're not going to have them for a bit. Nope. And I'm pretty sure you mentioned that uh, there were rumors floating around that they're not going to be in that. Book. Yeah, apparently one of the one of the more consistent rumors that, pe- that especially this guy in the Bolter and Chainsaw, the world eaters are not in this codex. Yeah. So what he was saying is the rumor is there's going to be like a PDF get you by army mm. list for the world eaters until the book hits. Whenever that is, probably Whenever, closer to the end of the year. I'm, I'm I would guessing. assume that's going to be towards. The, um, you know, I, I would assume that's going to be towards the end of the year because yeah. there's going to be a lot they've got to do with the world eaters. I mean, Angron's going to yeah. be part. Obviously, Angron's going to be part of it. So that's going to be an event, isn't it? Like Angron coming back is going to be seismic. That's going to be huge. That's you know a new prime uh, a new Primarch returning and Angron of all of them. That's going to be huge. Mm. New Berserkers, obviously. Yeah. Even though Adam's not here to lament the fact, new act, new berserkers. <laughs> there's obviously going to be at least one group of specialist terminators. Maybe Khan. Uh, well, we've, I mean, we've got the new Khan. Oh, that's true. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, we probably don't need a new, new, new Khan. No. But it, his rules are definitely going to be in that book. Yeah, because he's, so he's the, like the world eater's world eater, isn't he? Yeah. So the minimum release for that for for world eaters will be berserkers and. Um, the Primarch, and that would be it. Yeah. Minimum. There might be Minimum. more, obviously. I, ima- I imagine it's going to be a lot more than that, because they're going to need... I don't it. know. They need a Death Guard-style release to make them work. They do, but they could, work, just, you know? they could just go and say that their basic Marines are 
you know, the Chaos Space Marines, but paint them red. They could go for that. They could. Which I hope I hope they don't. I hope they put a bit more into it. You can't really do that with um, the Rubrique. That no. you, you couldn't have done that with the Rubrique. You can't really do that with the Plague Marines either. Yeah, yeah, uh, you could technically do it with corn stuff, and you could yeah. technically probably do it with like the Slanesh stuff. Yeah, yeah, Emperor's Children, it'd be fine. It would actually yeah. do really well with the Emperor's Children. But like you um, say, if they do go in and they do make more, I'll be more than happy, but I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't go mm -hmm. too hard in. They just go a little light in. Maybe they'll do... Uh, uh, like uh, maybe they'll kind of look at the, well, what they call the um, the Age of Sigma ones, the Blood Swarm. Oh, the, is that what they're the, called? The uh, Bloodbound, yeah. The Bloodbound, yeah. Maybe they'll have like Blood Priests and stuff like yeah. that. Maybe they won't. I don't know. That would be my guess because they're going to need something like that to, for their anti psyker stuff, you know? Mm. I would be my guess. They might go down that route. They might even do like a little bit of jiggery pokery like they did with the Thousand Sons where you get a few Age of Sigma units sort of like transposed over. So like the Slaughter yeah. Beasts from the Chaos Space, from the, um, what's it called? The Slaves to Darkness book. That would fit very well in the oh, core well, army. Well, what's the, what's the, the model Korgoroth? that's... Yeah, is that the the model that came in the very first Age That's of it. Sigma box that you can't yeah. get anywhere else? Yeah, the yeah, Gorgon they'll, pro they'll probably well. throw that in because then they can finally release it on its own because I don't think yeah. you can buy it anywhere else. Yeah, that, that makes would, sense. That would fit fine. You know, mm. I, I, that would fit absolutely fine with that. Um, that yeah, who knows? There might even be like corn gore in the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who fun. knows? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Hmm. Because the one I think, of the, I think they should do that. I think they should well, do that. Well, one of the rumors floating around for Age of Sigma when the Beasts of Chaos is that there's going to be a new Corn Gore unit. I mean, again, there should be. There should be the the Plague mm. Gore if, if that's what they're called. The Pestigore, the, they're called. Oh, what, what's, what's the what's the Zinch one called? The Change Gore. Uh, they're Zarn Gore. We've got. Oh, that. of course, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> change Gore. Yeah, Zarn Gore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, and I'm, then I'm, we've got the Slan Gore as well. Yes. Yeah, the classic. Which are the Slanesh ones, which are mm. also out now and are beautiful. Yeah. Love them. Love them to bits. That's another thing I've got to get my arse and gear on, actually, a Heater Knights army. Because uh, I want to do them for, for the new edition of I Age. Think the only downsize to them seems to be they seem to be quite expensive for what you get. Because <laughs> I remember seeing the um, uh, the box, the, the <laughs> Battle Force box, and there wasn't as much in compared yeah. to some of the other forces, which was a shame. It was kind of like comparative to the Lumineth. Yeah. Uh, I think the most expensive army at the moment is like the Gene Stealer cults. Yeah, which is a shame, but I, you know, they're the newest force, so maybe that's <laughs> that's one of the reasons why. That may be one of the reasons. And yeah. again, they're they're bloody brilliant. Have you got their they're codex? Great. You have. Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. It's on my floor, right in front so of me. So good. It's yeah. such a good codex. That one. I'm surprised more people aren't sort of like complaining about that one. To be honest, but that one doesn't seem to have received as much blowback as the Tau. Well, I'm and, pretty sure I remember you saying they're quite a hard army to play to the the Zenith, really, didn't you? You said there's a lot are. of planning and tactics, yeah, and a lot of like finagling with their uh, with their um, gameplay elements, which might mm -hmm. be quite hard to initially wrap your head around of maybe how to play it. them maybe that's i would it. say like you know insofar as there are tiers of army not in terms of power but in terms of like playability mm. i would say like the the gene stealer cults are one of the harder armies to to play because they they do require a lot of knowledge of how the codex works and how to how there's a, a lot of tactics involved yeah uh, to get the best out of them you know, yeah. they're not like, you know, a beginner's army is, is technically a space marine army, isn't it? Because they're, they're quite tough. They can deal with most things. They're not that difficult to put an army together for, and they're pretty mm. adaptable. Whereas your Gene Stealer cult army, if things go wrong, they go wrong. <laughs> they go wrong hard, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> they, they, can't, they can't sustain themselves. They have yeah. to rely on their, their uh, external tactics and that's abilities it. and whatnot. So it's not that's... only you gotta, you got to know that. you got to know what all the troops do. you got to mm. know how to play the game in general. So, yeah, yeah. like you say, quite a lot for a, for a newbie to potentially yeah. learn. And even, yeah. even a more uh, dedicated gamer yeah. has like, a lot to take in. They're a bit like the Thousand Sons in that regard. They're the same. But at least with the Thousand Sons, you go, ah, ha, ha, magic go boom yeah. for the most yeah. part. But obviously there's more to it than that. <laughs> but I think no, with the Thousand true. Sons, at the, at the very least, you can just point magic gun at somebody <laughs> and they explode. That's pretty much it. I mean, that that really is the strength of the Thousand Sons. It's the, it's that mortal wound factory they become in the psychic phase. Mm. I mean, the, the few games I have played recently with them, um, I guess my uh, consistent uh, partner Graham down the road, um, they when they hit that psychic phase, it's unbelievable. 
It really is. It's insane. Do the you amount... hear a long sigh from Graham when yeah. it's like, here comes the psychic fist. Yeah. Oh, fuck's sake. It's Pretty really much, good. yeah. <laughs> the only, I mean, the only thing that really can stop them in the psychic phase is if the if a if the other player is playing a psychically equivalent army like the gray knights mm. which isn't common it's just no. not common well no or, the, it's like what do you play space marines oh gray knights no just space marines no oh. just space marines oh yeah. shame yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah oh shame oh, yeah. Well. oh well <laughs> Uh, or if they flub their roles, you know, if you get and for the thousand sons now in the psychic phase, because of all the abilities they have, you have to flub hard. Mm. I mean, like you have to be the unluckiest player <laughs> for the for the psychic phase to like fail completely, because <laughs> they've introduced so many rules to mitigate against that. Right. Especially if you know how to structure the army, you know. Yes. All you're really trying to do with the Thousand Sons Army, and so far as I can see, you're, you're trying to get as many psychers into it as possible. So you've got maximum cabal points, yeah? Because mm -hmm. once you've got maximum cabal points, you can really go to town. You can you can supercharge so many of your psychic powers to make sure that they don't fail, that they're undeniable, that their range is extended, and so on and so forth. You get, there's even a cabal ability that allows you to add another die three mortal wounds to any, any power that deals mortal wounds, right? Man. Which is brilliant. You add that on to Magnus's Gaze of Magnus ability, and he's rolling. If he rolls a good psychic test, which given his bonuses is pretty likely, <laughs> it means you can potentially be dealing four die three mortal wounds <laughs> to an enemy, you know? That's crazy. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, actually, one of the things I am really looking forward to, because one of the other armies that is sort of psychically equivalent to the Thousand Sons, not quite to the same degree, is the Eldari. Technically, they. I Would mean, you say they're a kind of mix between the the Thousand Sons and the Drakari, then? They're, a, yeah. I mean, they're, the the difference I think between the Eldari and the Thousand Sons in terms of the way their psychic powers manifest is, with the Thousand Sons, it's all about damage. It's all mm. about mortal wounds. You know, the amount of mortal wounds they can put out in the psychic phase is ridiculous. With the Eldari, their psychic powers are more about enhancement and protection. Oh, right. Okay, they, the buffing kind of yeah. than direct damage. I mean, they okay. do have mortal wound dealing psychic powers. They're just not as pervasive or as strong as those in the Thousand Suns, you know? Right. They're more about buffing and protecting and concealing. They're all about, like, the synergy in the army, which makes sense because that's how the, the Eldari work. Um, from what I've seen of the new Codex, the new uh, Eldari, uh, that's, that's a strange thing. It's called Codex Eldari. That, that surprised me because Eldari is the collective term for all of the Eldar, right? It's the term for both the Drakari and the Ajayani. I thought it was going to be called Codex Ajayani. Maybe they're just moving over to Eldari. And Maybe so. Just yeah, and they're having a Drukari Eldari rather than Ashiyani. Mm, maybe so, maybe so. I mean, like, the funny thing is, like, this codex is also, I mean, there are going to be, like, some players out there gnashing their teeth at this, but this codex is also an upgrade for the Drukari as well, you know. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. Can they, can they take some of the, the, the mm -hmm. armies? They can. They can take okay. Harlequins and they can take Corsairs. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's pretty 100%. good, right? Yeah, pretty good, and it also means that you can take the Inari forces now as well, which are co combinations of your Ajiani and Drukhari, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is pretty damn cool as well. They're a bit more limited in what they can take and in terms of their special rules and whatnot, but it's still a combination mm. Eldari Drukhari army. It's still pretty damn good. You can still take things like Incubi and whatever, you know, some really nasty units. So right, pretty damn good. Um, but I've, I've seen, I haven't got the codex yet cause it's not on general release yet. I've got it on pre-order, but I have seen like the reviews of it and some of the stuff it can do. It looks pretty tasty. I've got to say. So it's out this Friday, this Saturday, it's this Saturday. Yeah. Okay. It's this yeah. Saturday. It should be out. So, um, it should be winging its way to me relatively soon. I hope. Is there only the codex you get mm, at the moment? Yeah. Just the codex. Okay. It's all I can afford. At the moment, I'm no, <laughs> that makes sense. Finding then. myself a bit impecunious at the end of the month, which is, uh, um, not on you it's not that unusual but a bit more 
more than usual because I've had some bills to pay over the, ah, the of period, course. unfortunately. Some surprise bills, which has been like, oh, I can't get Are there this any sort. standout things that you'd like to get that you think you will get? I, I oh, suppose. Yeah, where, where, oh, you, you, oh, yeah, you're going to turn him into a Slanesh dude, aren't you? You know what? I don't think I am. No? I... I like that miniature too much. Oh I think I'm God. just going to put it together and paint it. If I, oh. you know, if I do want to make a Slanesh miniature, I'll get another one at some point. Okay. But I, I think I just want to put it together. I, there's so much good in that new miniature. It's unbelievable. I love the bared head. I love the spear. I think the spear is very cute. It's a nice reference to the old epic miniature from Days of Yore. Um, so yeah, I just want to put it together. He's a bit of a beast. That one. Yeah, I've seen yeah, he's a big boy. Seen his rules. He's a, he's an absolute bark, <laughs> and he's a really nasty piece of work. Um, like one on one against some of the nastiest units in the game, he'll he'll probably kill them. Well, the GW did a, a little article effectively promoting the figure, and I think the only <laughs> dude that stood up to him was Motarion. Wasn't it was he? Motarion. Yeah, yeah, it was Motarion. The only one who survived him. The only one who killed him. Yeah. All the others went down. That said, they didn't put him up against the likes of... They didn't put him up against Garthkull Thracker. They didn't put him no. up against the Abaddon. They didn't put him up against uh, Magnus, funnily enough. No, they, uh, they put him up against like a, a Bane Blade, uh, which I thought was a weird thing. I, I guess weird it's thing. the biggest thing the, the Imperial Guard have, I guess. But uh, what were the other things? Gilliman. They put him up against Gilliman. He slaughtered ah. him. He absolutely <laughs> just completely ripped him apart. A mm. Keeper of Secrets, which did well against him, but the Keeper of Secrets right. wasn't really fair because the demons don't have their new codex yet. So yeah, it's they're like, still running on old Steam effectively, right. aren't they? Yeah. I mean, when the new demons codex hits, the Keeper of Secrets is going to get that treatment. Obviously, all the greater demons will. They will be not very nice you like know? i can't imagine an avatar of kane's gonna stand up well against like scarbrand or cabanda surely no, i can't not in, di not in direct combat that's just not a fight you no, can win that ain't gonna to. work i mean like uh, nothing's gonna stand up against scarbrand in close no. combat scarbrand is like if he's anything like he's being represented in aos oh he's a monster i mean like, I, in in total War, warhammer 3 he's a beast right he's, he's I, just horrific <laughs> i can't i i he I, I still i mean i know we've spoken about this before but i still can't get over this he can do 16 mortal wounds with one hit mm. one hit of one of his axes does 16 mortal wounds yeah yeah it was a little bit of a threat is what we call him that's mental i can't remember i can't remember because in my mind and i'm sure this is wrong Kabanda is the the greater demon of 40k, and Scarbrand's the greater demon of fantasy slash AOS, and that doesn't seem to be well, true. Well, no, they're they're different demons. They are like different. Uh, there was a time when Scarbrand was like the highest demon in Corn's favor. Yeah, he's the and exile he, now. He's, yeah, well, he made the mistake of trying to hit Corn. Well, he 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 didn't try. He did hit him. He did. Corn he actually he did. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> what are he you actually doing? <laughs> managed to hit Corn, and then Corn literally picked him up and chucked him across yeah. like the universe <laughs> yeah and then Starbrand um, lost his mind he or like his it, mind, it, yeah. it basically like knocked his senses out it basically turned him into like a, an avatar of pure rage there's nothing left in him but pain mm. and rage now Kabanda is the is like I think he is currently the highest in Korn's esteem he's like the chief bloodthirster Oh, okay. So he's Scarbrand's replacement. Yeah, effectively. basically. He was the next both, in they, line. They both exist in both universes. So, right. Okay. You know, they like all you know, like all demons, they exist in multiple universes. It's sure. like in um, in Nurgle's esteem, you've got. I think there are two greater demons who sort of like vie for the top place. There's Rotagus, Rainfather, mm. and um, Kugath. Kugath. Yeah, Kugath, the Plague Father. Yeah, who is a miserable git by all accounts he's like Kugath. yeah kugath unlike the other greater demons he kind mm. of like is very morose and and constantly fretting about things ah, that's interesting they don't portray him like that in tall war uh, they they, they portray, oh, no wow. they portray him as quite happy to just be mixing his poisons oh that's interesting in the in the literature he's really fretful and anxious because mm. he's constantly trying to please nurgle mm. uh, he, he started life as a nurgling he started oh. life as a Nurgling, and then he fell into Nurgle's cauldron when Nurgle was brewing his masterpiece, the greatest disease he's ever created. Mm. And Kugoth ended up absorbing it all. 
Oops. and it swelled <laughs> him into a great unclean one. And oh, okay. ever since then, he's been terribly apologetic. He's constantly tried to recreate that formula, which right. is why he's so fretful and so sort of morose. <laughs> Whereas Rotigus is very happy. Rotigus is really ebullient, like a, like a classic great unclean one. You know, he's mm. he's kind of happier and constantly having a go at Kugoth for being morose and dour and bringing down the party. You know, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny. It's the same with you know all the greater demons. All the chaos gods are like this. In in Slanesh, you've got Nakari. Yep, I know Nakari. Uh, Nakari is one of the one of the top demons in Slanesh's purview. Um, Who's the other one then? I'm trying to. There are a couple. I'm trying to think who the other one would be. Oh, it's um, it's a demon prince by the name of um, Azazel. Oh, so not even a pure demon, a demon no, prince. Oh, a demon okay. prince. There was a time when Azazel was the very, very top of Slanesh's demonic pantheon. I don't know whether he still is. It's been a while since he's been mentioned. Okay. Um, but there used to be a time when he was the chief demon in Slanesh's favor. Um. Zeech, it's um, Kairos Fate Weaver. It, Kairos Fate Weaver, yeah, but there's others yeah. as well. There's Mechachan and there's um, Kairos of the Past, and then Avon there's Kairos Shakai. of the Future, yeah. and then there's Kairos of the Present, and yeah. sometimes all of them fight at the same time. Yep, because actually... Kairos is stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is. Stupid yeah. two headed bird. <laughs> Don't you find it interesting that the symbol of the Imperium is Kairos? Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Isn't that strange? I, someone, someone, I saw someone do a meme, and it was a like I think it was like an Imperial Guard or a Space Marine <laughs> who's like looking into the distance and saw the Aquila, and he pulled out some um, binoculars and it zoomed in and it showed Kairos. Oh, He's like, oh, damn it! <laughs> Isn't We're that saying, bizarre, oh. Mm-hmm. Isn't that strange? I mean, even like, you know, the whole thing of being of peering into the past and peering into the future, mm. the symbol has got that on it. The the eyes of the birds are different. So the one that's looking into the past is white and the one that's looking into the future is black. Yeah, it's almost like Zinch planned something mm. out or something. <laughs> it's <laughs> some, one of the two. You know, it's troubling, isn't it? Yeah. It is absolutely troubling. Um but yeah, I've seen I've seen a fair bit of the Eldari Codex and it looks really good. It mm. looks really good. I, again, people are doing the whole sky is falling thing. Ah, oh, it's gonna be the new killer codex. And it's it's gonna be good. There's no doubt. Pardon me, oh, it's yeah. gonna be good. But And again, the, been... the Eldar deserve it because they've yeah, sucked for a while they? as well. Don't they? They've they've <laughs> been in the doldrums for a little bit. A little not bit. only of the not only have the rules sucked, the models have sucked oh, for a fucking long time as well. So they deserve models. it. They do. I mean, they are still using those damn old warp spiders. <laughs> <Those> <laughs> That's warp something spiders. we still need an update for. That said, though the rumor mongers, the ones who are usually right, there's they've got some interesting stuff to say on the on the subject of the warp spiders. They were oh. saying that not only are we getting a new kit for them later in the year, there's going to be a Phoenix Lord released for them. Ah, good, something that should have happened years ago. Well, yeah, like. I mean, there must be a Phoenix Lord because there's a Phoenix Lord for all of the aspect temples. You know, the, yeah. the warrior who started the aspect temple. For most of the other Phoenix Lords, that's who it is. Well, the only exception is the Striking Scorpions. Karandras. Did we talk about this last time with Gruff? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. So Karandras did not start the Striking Scorpion. That's Our right. Kar- did, who is probably the founder of the Incubi Temples amongst the um, the Drakari, and it's probably mm. Dratzhar. It's almost, it is. I mean, like, it's one of those silly things where they're always like, oh, it could be him. Nobody really knows. It is. <laughs> it is. Dratsar is Ahra. If you look at the miniature, his armor is designed to look like a twisted version of Karandras's. It's even got like that segmented helmet that goes back and forms into like a stinger. It's got that. It, it, it's a corrupted version of the scorpion armor. The incubi, if you look at them, they're corrupted versions of striking scorpions, effectively. Mm. It's it that he is. <laughs> Dratsar is Ahra, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll never they'll never come out and say it. They'll never because it's one of those eternal mysteries, right? Sure. Yeah, he is until he isn't. Yes, I guess, right. From a that, writing term. Unless like I mean, they could they could potentially pull a blinder and have Ahra come back and it not be Dratsar, you know, they could actually bring him in as a character at some point. But I don't think it's likely. Because yeah. Ratsar is Ahra. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, Karandras is another one who needs updating. We're still using the old Karandras Phoenix Lord miniature, which is which is a shame because it's from Second Ed. It's one of the, <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 it was released the same year I got into the hobby. Okay, yeah. <laughs> At the age of eight. 
some 30 odd years ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> right it's so weird it's so weird to think that that miniature is still doing the rounds um and it's a shame because he's my favorite i really love that phoenix law he's so weird and sinister mm. fugan fugan the burning lance we still need a new miniature for him baharoth we still need a new miniature azure man we still need a new miniature uh and it's a shame when you compare them to the phoenix laws that have been done jane czar and uh morgan ra oh they're so good well, hopefully, after let's say the years up, which you know, th this edition's up, hopefully they won't forget to keep so. pushing I the uh, the Xenos races, and they yeah. won't just get pushed, you know, back to the side again like they well, were for the, the longest Lords time. Need doing because the Phoenix Lords are iconic; they are really significant to the Eldari race. They are their mythic folk heroes, right? Mm. And also, they are they are the if the if the Eldari foresight is to be believed they're going to be the ones that muster the race to fight against chaos in the final battle for all creation. Okay. The Rana Dandra, as the elder call it. So they are massively significant. <laughs> they, they, they deserve a bit of respect, you know? I mean, in terms of rules, have you seen the new rules for them? No. Well, the, again, uh, rules in the, you don't ask me about rules because I still ha can't play the game. So ouch. Are they ha hard hitting? Are they? Oh, yeah. They've had a bit oh, of an upgrade. Are they hard-hitting? They are tough. <laughs> but they're, they're meant to be. I mean, these guys are ancient mythic folk heroes, you know? Mm. And not only that, they're immortal. Yeah. The lore of the Phoenix Lord states that they've died multiple thousands of times throughout history, right? When the, a Phoenix Lord dies, quote-unquote the suit of armor absorbs the body and soul of the incumbent and then calls out to another aspect warrior, another exarch of their aspect shrine who has been chosen. And then they go on these, this incredible voyage across the galaxy to find where the suit of armor has come to rest. And then they, they put it on. They actually yeah. become the new Phoenix Lord and the souls of all the other incumbents of the suit are still in it. They're still in the, uh, the, the soul crystals and like the, the, the circuitry of the armor. Almost and they, thousand sunny rubric. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Funnily enough. Yes. And the, the incumbent becomes the new incarnation of that Phoenix Lord with all of the Phoenix Lords, personality and abilities and capabilities and those of everyone who has worn the suit before them mm. it's brilliant isn't it so they are these eternal warriors that fight across time and space you can never truly die yeah it's a wonderful bit of folklore i think it re it's beautiful you know they're the eldari equivalent of like demon princes or something <laughs> like that you know mm. and they are that tough they're supposed to be you know they are de they are death dealers. They're absolute, and also I mean they they epitomise certain aspects of Kila Mensha Kane, the god of war. So they are supposed to be the supreme warriors, right? Yeah. So they've they've had a bit of a glow up. Boy, have they had a bit of a glow up. I mean the 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 amount of wounds some of these guys can put out is obscene. Morgan Ra, the amount of stuff he can do from a distance is evil. It is absolutely evil. It's brilliant. Um, Fugan, the Burning Lance, his weapon can deal so many wounds from a distance. It's like, ah, ouch. What's ouch. the counter to them then? Uh, well, they're not that, they don't have great toughness. Their toughness is actually really low. Um, as yeah, you know, they're still Eldari ultimately um a concerted effort like mortal wounds will destroy them think the thousand suns are a good counter you know i know i keep saying that but they are the army i'm most familiar with so you know the thousand suns can put out enough mortal wounds to deal with a phoenix lord hmm. pretty easily but yeah they're good i mean they are very very cool warriors um massed firepower massed firepower will take them down Anything that's got a very, very, very high number of attacks. So the Tau. Like, uh, yeah, swamping units. If you can swamp Oh, Tyranids. Them. Yeah, yeah Tyranids. Um, something like your Poxwalkers in a Death Guard army that can just swamp them and mire them. Right. 
So would you say the more elite armies, the the smaller mm -hmm. kind of more elite ones, would have a hard trouble with them? Uh, would have more trouble with them? I would say so. Yeah. Okay. Because what what if you've got a phoenix lord? What you're going to be trying to do with them is target like a character. You're not going to really want most characters getting into one on one combat with one. Right. Because they're going to be able to take down quite a few of them. Not all of them, but quite a few of them. But something like, you know, something like a greater demon or something will make mincemeat of a... A demon prince will probably make mincemeat of a, a, a phoenix lord. Um, but things like a space marine commander, oh, they're going to rip them to shreds. <laughs> Absolutely rip them to shreds. Um, they've also got these lovely buffing abilities for the aspect that they represent. So okay. when phoenix lords are on the battlefield, they do very nice things for the aspect warriors that they represent. Is it only? Which, can you switch those abilities out, or is it something that you have to choose at the start of the the match? I'm not sure. I know for the Exarchs, the uh, which are like the they're the lieutenant equivalents for the Aspect Warriors. Mm. You can actually mix and match or swap out different abilities depending on what you want to do. Okay, but I was wondering you, if it was similar to like the combat protocols with the Necrons, where you can kind of change them around per turn. I, oh, I don't know whether you can change them in the battle. I don't mm. think you can change them in the battle, but you can certainly select different ones for them okay. before you start the battle, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I, I mean, things like the Harlequins have had a massive glow up, and now you can take like Harlequin armies as well, which is great fun. All five models of them. All five models. Or six, of them, yeah. or however many there are. But my god, you know, those those very limited models make for killer armies. Yeah, I imagine, because they were already pretty hard to hit. Mm -hmm. I imagine they're even harder to hit now. Oh, yeah. And again, lots of mortal wounds can they put out. Oh, mm. my God. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen what the Harlequin's Kiss does? That weapon they have on their fist? Uh, no. It's like a it's like a tube that, that is... It, it projects from the Harlequin's wrist, and they punch it into their opponents in close combat and what unspools from it you know the monofilament wire that the warp spiders fire from their death spinners oh yeah that unspools inside whatever they hit it with and reduces their insides to soup <laughs> so they can do mortal wounds based on that which is really cool so how how would that work? Like, uh, obviously not from a gameplay perspective, mm -hmm. but from a from a story uh, perspective on the the rubric, would it, they just leak uh, out rather than actually goo them? I'd well, I'd assume they just like open like multiple different rents in the armor, and the dust leaks out. Leaks you know, out. there's always okay. there's yeah. always a way of like you know fan wanking it away. It's like <laughs> it's like how you know the Drakari use loads of poison weapons. How does poison weapons work on Thousand Sons or Necrons? Well, they well, know. Well, more importantly, how does it work on Death? God. how does it work on death guard right well yeah. they know that they're facing these particular enemies right so they're mm. not instead of loading them with standard poisons they load them with psychic poisons or with with i suppose with the death guard they, they load them with disinfectants don't they you know? yeah <laughs> and antibacterial agents and whatnot shoot, shoot them with soap <laughs> right right with the thousand sons maybe it's they they leak acid you know so that eats mm. the armor away it's it's that kind of thing. I mean, there used to be a time way back when when the game was more molecular, like back in Second Ed, when you'd have very specific rules. So things like the Avatar couldn't be hurt by heat-based weapons. Right. So you'd have this whole list of heat-based weapons that it couldn't be affected by. But it was never any good because you'd, there'd always be new heat-based weapons that you'd have to add to it. And it would be like, uh, yeah, you know, it's it, they've made it a bit more general now. Mm. Which actually works much better. <laughs> it yeah, does it's not work. like a video game where those things can be updated very quickly. Right. Like you say, at, at some point you just have a giant list and you go, oh, for God's sake. Exactly. No, so, like, it. you can't really have, like, it, it really doesn't make sense to have, like, an entire army, one of a core mechanic of an entire army, like poison weapons are for the Drakari being negated by another entire army. It just doesn't make sense, you know? Um, I'm just so, thinking of the fly, the fire slayers in AOS getting hit by a firestorm and dying to it and being like, that seems wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But from obviously from a gameplay perspective, you have to have that. Otherwise, it's just, have yeah, it. otherwise it just sucks, doesn't it? It just, <laughs> right. This isn't it, just, fun. it just introduces frustration, doesn't it? Yeah. You know? It just again fine in the video game. It works in video game worlds, but I don't think it, it carries over to like the board game world. To the tabletop, well. no, it yeah. really doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, I mean, 
I meant to ask actually, like the I know like the Eldari are a really niche army, and um, I you know I've done videos about how much I love them because they were my first army, and I've always got, mm. had a bit of a soft spot for them. But where I mean, where do they fit for you? Are they uh, do they have any intrigue or interest, or are they like one of because the, they are very niche, you know? Well, obviously, this is only from my perspective. Uh, to me, they're they're just space elves and i don't like elves because they're arrogant assholes right. i mean yeah you're not gonna like the eldari then i mean they are no exactly they're they the worst are <laughs> arrogant ass- i mean they're they're arrogant to the nth degree i would say they're yeah. more arrogant than any elf is you know oh I mean, yeah certainly which is ironic since they should have uh, with the the slaneshi event they should have been humbled but they oh, weren't yeah. humbled at all which is even more frustrating no they weren't they were not i mean they once had the greatest empire in all of the history of the 40k universe they had had an empire that literally spanned the entire universe right one could argue they only had that empire because the necrons did so much work mm-hmm. previously and then had to go to sleep mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one one could potentially throw that out there as a as a dig at the elder rei i might but say they that. lost it they lost it yeah because they, they got too sexed they destroyed it you know they allowed it to be destroyed and yeah. um you know, th- there really does come a point when you c- you have to throw that in an Eldari's face when they're being an arsehole, right? Mm. Which they are, you know. If you've ever read it's any it, of the here's fiction... The, here's the thing, they didn't just fuck them, their own empire, they fucked everybody. 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 I tell you what, there aren't many races in the universe that can say they single-handedly gave birth to in a new chaos power. No, not I even mean, the humans. The humans perpetuate uh, the problems in the universe, <laughs> but they, they did not, like cause the eye of terror they right. made it worse but, but they, they didn't, didn't cause, cause it. it right no. yeah absolutely true the eldari did yeah <laughs> you know the, there comes a point when you've got to you've got to step back right and, and say hang on hang I, on I was, i'm trying to think is there anything that you could equivalent to it? i was like leading the tyranids to this universe and even then that was if, an accident, if that happened, though, it? if you that know, happened, I mean, well, let's say like uh, Zarak did it on purpose yeah. for some stupid reason. Right. Even that wouldn't be as catastrophically damaging no. to the universe as the Eye of Terror. No, there, is, uh, there probably isn't anything, is there? there no, isn't anything not really. As catastrophic as that, because the Eye of Terror is completely different from the Tyranids. Even if they did consume all life in this universe, fine. That's all that happens, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. it's just what happens. The Eye of Terror is a metaphysical threat. That's the problem, yeah. It actually, like, undoes the metaphysics of this universe. It unravels reality itself. And it's a two-pronged strike because it has an effect on the material world as well as affecting every, most, let's say most species Mm -hmm. uh, in the universe. And then also, like you say, doing the metaphysical uh, damage as well to the universe. (laughs) It's just a a two-pronged attack, which you you can't beat. No, nope. the, the, the only way you could win is like somehow sealing up the eye of terror. Well, no that ain't going to happen now, is it? With the cicatrix <laughs> no. maledictum, it ain't uh, going to no, happen too, now. It's, it's too big now. <laughs> the eye of terror is split open at the seams, and now the cicatrix is like all across the universe. There's yeah, not much. much. You can do. Yeah. There isn't much you can do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> how oh, do you it. stitch that back together <laughs> no you need to somehow create space mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. god uh, that would that sounds like that would have to be necrons elder and humans all working in tandem it together does that ain't that happening. Way, doesn't it? i mean i think the only race that would ever have a chance of that are those who sealed it in the first place who are like the necrons right pretty much yeah the necrons you know they have that the ability to create those pylons that deaden the warp mm. um but even they don't have the ability there's not enough of them anymore they're not coordinated enough anymore and they yeah. just don't have the technology anymore right if I mean, they worked uh, with the humans let's say in a fictional world where <laughs> people could get on if right. they worked with mankind mankind has the manpower yeah the, just the pure numbers to probably get the things built Mm-hmm. If the Necrons pulled the fingers out and actually figured out how the stuff that they did worked yeah. again, which I think they've got a better chance of doing it than the humans do. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the Eldari. I mean, yeah, the Eldari are arrogant assholes. They're xenophobic, arrogant assholes. But they have softened them a little bit recently in the fiction. <laughs> yeah, they have. They they are now more inclined to work with humanity That's, against yeah. chaos. It's not for out of any altruism. Oh God, no. No. It's because they don't see any choice. Mm. It's because they've read the runes of fate, and it's like, you know what? If we don't do this, we're screwed. It's almost shocking that it's taken them this long to figure out that right. they might need help with chaos. 
Yeah, like writing on the wall, given, guys. Come on. Yeah, I mean, especially given that they're so small now. I mean, like yeah. their, their race is dwindling. I mean, it's been dwindling for eons now. So, mm. yeah, it's it 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 is a bit of a mark against them, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, so that that kind of arrogance. Um, I think in uh, the the trailer for Total War Warhammer Two, Morathi says something like, "Oh, look at their pretty cities. Look how well they burn." That's mm-hmm. how I always feel about anything Elf or Eldari. It's like, well, well you might be very a, pretty, but everything you make burns very nicely at the end right. of the day. There's a great quote in one of the older Eldari codices. I think it's the third Ed Eldari codex, and it's from Eldred Ulthron. And he's talking about how one Eld- he would see an entire galaxy of human civilization burn to save one Eldari life. Well, so the dark uh, angels, if they could get one exile, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's actually, that's so, true. Yeah, that yeah. is absolutely true. There are microcosms of that actually throughout <laughs> the universe, aren't there? Yeah. Although, again, they have softened a little bit. Like, you know, mm. Gilliman has invited them in. You know, he, he Oh, can, wow. He, yeah, he consorts quite happily with the uh, the Eldari at this point. That's uh, true. He's, oh, I thought you meant the dark so, angels. I was like, oh, oh they softened? dark angels. No, he's Yeah, still, I was going to say, that would have been I a shock say, as well. <laughs> I would say he has been actually actually much more accommodating of the Eldari than he has of the Dark Angels. Well, he can't be disappointed by the Eldar. He can be no. disappointed by his brothers. He knows what the Eldar yeah. are all about for the most part. Pretty much. He knows that, you know, given the opportunity, they will screw him over, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's the Dark Angels, yeah. He's, he, they're an unknown quantity at the moment. Well, so. it's, it's not only that. I would imagine it's like they're a disappointment because it's like, yeah. I remember what you used to be and now look at you. Oh, yeah. God, In fact, look at you now. Well, he never liked them back back at the beginning. <laughs> I'm sure, like they're, they're still like he would prefer them the way they were than they are yeah. now. Though. Oh yeah. Oh, I've no doubt. I've no doubt because the way they are now, mm. you Oof. know, they yeah. I mean, again, you know, we talked about the Eldari creating a uh, a whole chaos god. The Dark Angels are responsible for creating quite a few traitor war bands through their actions. You know, the yeah. Crimson Sa- the Crimson Slaughter, they only exist because the Dark Angels were dicks to them. Well, I mean, you, you could say that about the Space Wolves as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Ultramarines. Let's let's <laughs> if we if Gilliman's going to point fingers, he mm. created the first Chaos Legion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah, the destruction of Monarchia. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So let's exactly. let's not go point let's, fingers. Yeah, it's true. You know, cannot deny it. And that if is you a, hadn't, if Yan fucked Monarchy, let's yeah. say it might not have happened, but it wouldn't have happened with Logar. At least uh, he would have been loyal. Have, it wouldn't have been as extreme. I mean, like yeah. he. If it were not for Monarchia, Lorgar would not have retreated into seclusion. He wouldn't have been influenced by Corfaeron and by Erebus as as yeah. much. And he may have been open to a bit more suggestion from his brothers and his father, you know, as opposed to, you know, these two scrutty little priests in his ranks. Um, <laughs> one of them was his, uh, his fake dad, which is... Yeah, let's be fair. One of them was his fake yeah. dad, yeah. Faron, yeah, absolutely. I suppose the other one was, like, his teacher for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, Erebus so was It, it teacher, makes sense, uh, but it's still, you know, I, I 100% agree. If Monarchy hadn't been blown up, he wouldn't yeah. have resented... He probably still wouldn't have liked Gilliman, but he wouldn't have, like, hated him. But he wouldn't have hated his guts, would he? Yeah. You know? Which he does, you know? <laughs> this... there, are so, there are so many, like, trader legions where you look at them and you go, you know you're justified in why you hate the... Well, the no, yeah, the Iron Warriors, right? The Iron Warriors, they were they were never given the plaudits they deserved. The Iron Warriors fought in all the worst war zones in the Imperium, right? Mm-hmm. And they were stretched so thin because they were then expected to garrison and fortify the worlds and the legions that they conquered or that they that they fortified and they were spread so thin and bled dry and they never got the plaudits or the love that the imperial fists got that the blood angels got you know yeah it's absolutely true it's yeah. absolutely true so many of them were undone because of the, the short-sightedness of the emperor and of the imperium itself and of uh, each of the brothers as well because yeah. it's like okay if the emperor treats the iron warriors like shit that's crappy the fact that everyone looked down their noses at the iron warriors because they were um trench diggers mm-hmm. yeah it's like right. come on <laughs> right come they on. were doing the work right they yeah. were doing the real work of this imperium yeah um and they were they, they they were not only not celebrated for it they were kind of looked down on for it and it's like come on Perturabo just wanted to build us some little clocks and machine yeah. men and that's it Perturabo you know he wasn't a bad guy 
at the beginning of all of this. He really wasn't. No. He's one of the many of the, the traitor Primarchs that actually wasn't that bad at the beginning. Um, you know, there you are kick a, a man of... enough, or you become, right. you'll become very bitter and mean. Absolutely. I mean, there's a couple. I mean, like, you know, well, Knight was, was a bit... He, yeah, I mean, he, what he needed was he needed... I think Night Haunter could have been saved if he had a mum. <laughs> effectively yeah, yeah, I, someone you know, to care about him and all that kind of junk and maybe you, help his psychological you know, issues you joke if he'd had the proper no, no, guidance <laughs> no yeah. if he had the proper guidance he'd have been all right he was a slave to his precognitive visions his whole yeah. problem is fatalism and he was a slave to the world he was he yeah. grew up in as well his environment absolutely. was a nightmarish place absolutely he became what he became because he had to become it right yeah um if the emperor had taken him aside, or Magnus for that matter, Magnus Anyone. was, was yeah. precognitive as well. Magnus mm. is like foresight is incredible. Like it's the equivalent of the Eldaris, right? Mm. If he'd have taken him aside and said, "Look, you're experiencing this, but your foresight is broken, right? You are only seeing the darkest of all possible futures. That's not the only one. There are." any number there are thousands out there and they are determined by your actions you don't need to be a slave to them right i mean there, I there's, some, you... there's some irony in that statement i suppose as well, i suppose there is magnus, story for magnus um, yeah yeah <laughs> but, but no the, the message is true it's just also ah oh, magnus yeah. don't talk to me about that <laughs> yeah right right but the emperor right the emperor was a precog as well the mm, emperor yeah was like, you know taking him aside and said look this is what's happening. It's actually a mistake. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a malfunction, right? Or he would have said like, Hey, I know Horace is going to kill me. You don't see me whining about it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <Throw up. laughs> well, the weird thing is, I mean, one of night Haunter's statements to the emperor when they first physically meet seems to suggest that he knows as well. Oh, the Horace is going to kill him. Yeah. That would be he interesting. Says yeah. The, the emperor meets night Haunter for the first time and he calls him Conrad Kurtz and night Haunter says to him, that's not my name father. And I know full well what you have planned for me. Hmm. Interesting. eh? Yeah, definitely. Interesting. The worst of it is, I mean, night Haunter is kind of justified. All of his darkest visions did come true. Yeah. Cool. I mean, uh, he probably didn't help because he was probably no, helping them along. It was a self-fulfilling me. prophecy. That's Pretty absolutely much, yeah. true. But no, I mean, even with regards to the other Primarchs, they came true. The ones yeah. saw about the other Primarchs came true. Yeah. So, you know, maybe the 40k universe is just the darkest of all possible realities, and he's the one who <laughs> sees it most clearly. Perhaps, yeah. Maybe that's the case, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Half, the, most of the traitor primarchs, most of them, not all of them. Yeah, some of them, you know, just like no. Yeah, but no. most of them were felled by circumstance, or yeah. by the the lack of concern or foresight of their betters, or by some mm. wider Machiavellian plan that hasn't been revealed yet. Mm. It's hard to say, isn't it? I'd There's... say they're the more interesting ones. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, look, I say that, and like one of the ones that didn't fall into that category is easily uh, Fulgrim. He, oh, yeah. He, he fell in because he's Fulgrim. Well, Fulgrim... And he's I a mean, narcissist, bless to him. To be 100% fair to him, he was influenced by a demon that possessed his body for a short time. Yes. But... But yeah. he actually became worse than the demon. That, that's that's the, the point. He actually yeah. like became worse than the demon, you know. So, yeah. and I think in Fulgrim, that was there at the beginning. Yes, I. Th I mean, I, for me, that's part of what makes Fulgrim so delicious. It's the fact that that was there at the beginning, you know. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Fulgrim was like if he were to play Fulgrim with a uh, an actor. I would have him mm -hmm. like as Christian Bale from American Psycho. Yeah. Oh, like that's yeah. who he kind of reminds me of. Like he looks at people's bank cards and starts mm -hmm. sweating. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. You, you said it right when you called him a narcissist. I mean, that yeah. is absolutely true. There is like this strain of narcissism in Fulgrim, and narcissism is a Slaneshi trait. Of course, it's something that Slaanesh values. So, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's no real surprise that Fulgrim found a um, a patron in Slaanesh. But I I really like Fulgrim. I really like him, and I really oh, like fascinating. His, uh, I like him when he does embrace Slanesh. I think that's really interesting because mm, he oh, does yeah. it of his own volition. Mm. That's what's so interesting. He's not coerced into it. I mean, it's why Angel Exterminatus is still one of my favorite Horace Heresy books because right. him and Perturabo are great 
mix. They they're they're, are, they're the worst kind of like buddy cop movie you've ever <laughs> seen. Yeah, right. Bulgrim yeah. going crazier and crazier and Peter Rabba going, what, what's wrong with you? What Stop is this. going on? Stop with being you, yeah. silly. Don't, what don't is happening this. here? Yeah. Why are you putting gems inside of you? This just seems weird. This is just weird now. I just want to go home and play <laughs> yeah. with my models again. Whatever. Yeah. I'm going to hit you with my hammer now. <laughs> bonk. Hammer Which go was bonk. A big mistake. Obviously. It was, but he didn't know. To be fair, if you saw something like that, you'd probably want to bonk yeah. it as well. Yeah. Just like, no, go away. We're done. That's my favorite moment in the whole book. You know, when, when, Sl- when Fulgrim erupts into demonic splendor mm. and he sees the entirety of like reality through new eyes. And it's, mm. it's just the, the most exultant, wondrous thing for him. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that to bits. And, you know, since then, the whole heresy has been a game for him. That's true. Every time he's portrayed, he's just having a bit of fun. If you wanted to be really, like, shitty towards Fulgrim, you could technically, I suppose, say, uh, when he has that that one moment, you'll never feel this good ever again. <laughs> I've won. This is the zenith of pleasure you'll yeah, ever feel. Right. You'll never feel this good. Ha, this ha, ha. is it. Yeah, yep. this is it and but, you, you know, will a memory will cloud and you will forget how good it felt as well even better yeah i win you wanted to be shitty to him I if you, you and i think put robo didn't know that at the time but i like to think he would have said that if he knew Although, I mean, Perturabo ultimately becomes inspired by that, doesn't he? Because we know uh, yeah. that Perturabo actually does ascend later on. He yeah. becomes a demon primarch as well. Which I think is kind of a shame in some ways. I understand it's... Well, know, I, I, I like his it. reasons for doing it. Actually, I yeah. really appreciate his reasons for doing it. The reason he did it is longevity. Mm. He saw that the war was going to drag on for millennia and that even a primarch wouldn't, wouldn't survive it. Mm. So he had to engineer his own immortality. He's one of the very few demon princes and demon primarchs who ascends not as the result of any one god's patronage because he doesn't worship them. And the reason I say it's a shame is because I think it would be quite fun to have one really old primarch who yeah. is like for chaos who survived like, all oh, this time and not like, uh, ascended at all. Yeah, that would be interesting. And it? just kept kicking them away, going, "No, I don't want to do it. No, I mm. don't want to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do this shit game. I'll be on the in quotations the chaos side. By I'm not going to serve one of you. I'm not going to ascend. No, you may have that out there. The the official Maybe. fluff says that Alpharius and Omega got <laughs> dead, <laughs> but. Who knows, right? Who knows? Who did, again, they're as dead as they are until they're not. Right, exactly. Who knows with yeah. those two? Who knows? Because, like, you know... That's Dan uh, Abner. He probably knows best, if anyone. Right, right. I mean... <laughs> 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 they could be anywhere. They could be anyone at this point. Have we actually heard about the Cabal... Since probably probably not since i think the cabal are only a dan abnett thing aren't they and i don't think we've ever really touched on them since the horror heresy no they're mentioned in the soul in like the solar wars because you get the characters like that makes sense turning Mm -hmm. up again but they're not i mean in solar wars grammaticus is separate from them and he actually says that they were actually wrong so Mm. i don't know we still don't don't know much about the cabal as an entity because that should be a powerful force it should but I don't sort. think I don't think it survives. From, it mustn't. No, I wonder I if they'll they'll so. revisit it during Solar Wars and kill it off. Like I don't know, I Demon Primarch that's... just wipes it out or something. I think. Well, Erebus has been doing a damn good job of wiping out the other powers in the universe. Oh, has he? Oh dear. Yeah, he's been visiting basically all of the alternative powers to chaos, all of the the forces in the universe that pose a threat to it, and doing them in. Oh, okay. Which is kind of interesting. Are these human related forces or mostly, yeah. Okay. Mostly. That makes sense. Oh well they're kind of ab human. I mean, some of them are really surprising. You know, some mm. of them are like characters who introduce real complexities into the mythology, like real complexities, like the mother uh. of the Primarchs, for example. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. He has a good old chat with her. Mm. But she's powerful. She's she's like some other order. She's like the Emperor, you know? Right. Just not. She just doesn't want what the emperor wants. In fact, she hates it. She hates it so mm. much. Um, 
but you never you don't really know why at this point barring the obvious you know which is it's it's an empire and therefore it's an it's an abomination you know how long until uh, solar war ends then at i this don't point? i mean it's coming to an end it must be because everything's in place now hmm it is drawing to it a close. It must be because I, I thought we knew. I thought uh, like we knew that it was the, the last thing was going to be like a two part of or something like I'm that. Sure, two yeah, there is. There has been something mooted, hasn't there? There has been yeah. like an ending mooted. So they, I we thought must, we heard like it was like book number something something something, like something was yeah. going to be the last one. I mean, thus far they've all been really good. Mm, that's, that's good. The Solar Wars books are great. They're they're actually far more consistent in quality than the Horus Heresy books are, which is great because that's such an up and down series. It's up and down, and it there's the, yeah. it, I mean, when it hits the heights, it hits them really, really well. When it hits yeah. the doldrums, it goes really, really deep and bad. Yeah, it's watching an episode of EastEnders where nothing happens, and you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all remember Battle for the Abyss. I was thinking of. Um, Oh, what was the one set on Earth with the prisoner traitors who were released from a prison? Outcast of the Damned? Is that oh, it? Oh, I, I, I can't remember, but I know the one you mean. That one was pretty yeah. flat as well. There's That's quite it. a few that were a little bit like, uh, we need a book here. What was <laughs> so, the, the one with the assassin on the front? Oh, yeah. Ne- that nemesis, was nemesis something? That was just nemesis. so nothing, that was. Yeah. Was so, like, <laughs> I don't think I finished that one, to be honest. It was just sort of like... I don't think I started <laughs> it, but I remember hearing everybody say Nemesis is one of those ones who just don't bother. Just don't went, bother. Oh, okay. I mean, that that was my problem with it. There was just no point to it. Yeah, kind of like Outcast of the Damned, if that's what it was called. It, it didn't do anything. It could have done something if they tied it into, like, um, Garrow, Nathaniel yeah. Garrow's stuff. If they tied it into that, you could have probably had something flow a bit better, but yeah. I don't think they did. Well, all of those characters are really coalescing now. So you've got, like, um, Loken and Garrow and all the characters who survived the Istvan massacres. Hmm. Uh, they are becoming the antecedents of the Grey Knights. Ah, that's good. Nice. They are the antecedents of the Death Watch and the Grey Knights and you know these like the 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 secret Black Ops Space Marines. Right. That's where they're coming from. That's, That's who they good. are. It's kind of mm. cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, I love the fact Loken's back. Yeah, I always liked Loken. Loken's really interesting. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but they it feels like off, right? yeah, it feels like what they're doing is bringing him to a point where he will be like a sacrificial character. Mm. You know what I think? There is in the old fluff in the descriptions of Horus fighting the Emperor, they are disrupted in their fight by a Space Marine who Horus like flays with a look. He just kills oh. him with a look, <laughs> and it's that act that makes the Emperor like explode on him with his full power ultimately because mm. he sees there's nothing left of Horus. He just sees there's nothing left. There's no bringing him back. I think that's going to be Loken. Do you think it, is little Horus still around? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it could be little Horus either it because be. it's like he's maybe, maybe little Horus becomes like a, the pure version of Horus or something mm, like maybe. that. What Horus w- would have been or used to be. And that's yeah, what Horus doesn't like be. about it. Something that, like that. Yeah, it could be. I mean, yeah. at the moment, he's still loyal to Horus, but he does have doubts. Yes, yeah. I think that happened in the... the what was it called? Ven- vengeance? Yeah, the more he sees of what is happening to the the sons of Horus and to the legions that have sided with Horus, the more he doesn't like mm. it. Yeah. Which is, you know, to be fair, you look if you you know if you see the Death Guard at this point, it's you like see any any of the oh, specialized legions. The only legion yeah. that you can kind of get away with is probably is probably the, maybe the Thousand Sons because yeah, we don't the know that sons, they're, they're yeah. dust. And they haven't maybe be, they the, haven't become dusty yet. So oh, the, the rubric hasn't, hasn't happened. happened. Yeah, okay. no, the rubric so hasn't them happened yet. you can get with, away with them and the yeah. world eaters because ah, oh, it's just the world eaters. Well, they're the know. same as they've always been. There's yeah. no difference. There no. is so little difference between them. When, the only difference between them from when they're loyal and when they turn to chaos is when they're loyal, they're blue and white. When they're not, they're red. That's it. That is it. That's the only difference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even no, I... when they're blue and white, you can't tell they're blue and white because they're often so caked in gore, it doesn't matter. I guess the only real change is the helmet design, right? Yeah, they, they get the bunny ears. 
Yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah, they Death Guard. He, he, Death Guard. They're very visually different, and the oh, uh, they are the Empress Children are very very visually yep. different as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Empress Children. It's because of all the stuff they do to themselves. Yeah, I was going to say you kind of would notice if someone's like spanking themselves with a, a barbed chain. Um, and also, if like, oh, that's like, odd bits of their armor missing and they've got mm-hmm. like like these rippling torsos and like mutated tentacle arms and yeah they've got these massive distorted mouths where like the doom sirens have been installed and the speakers yeah. of the noise marines yeah they they do not look like loyalists anymore you'd pick up on something you'd be like yeah look a little bit different i feel yeah just yeah. a tad and the amount of surgeries they've done to themselves at this point as well. <laughs> Happily. They've had a whale of a time. So oh, far. yeah. I mean, they are definitely one of the few traitor legions who's really enjoying themselves. They're loving oh, the yeah. heresy. They're having a grand old time. They're living their best lives, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they're often them. short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very short lives indeed. But, you could argue uh, that's maybe for the best for them. Yeah, because then they well, don't—they're not numb to everything if they live too long. It's rock and roll, isn't it? It's live fast, yeah. die young, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, a little bit more extreme than that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I love that sequence in Angel Exterminatus where, like, the em- some Empress children are exposed to the void of space. Oh, they love it, yeah. and the the Iron Warriors drag them back aboard a ship, and they're going around <laughs> trying to give them medical assistance, and the Empress children are like, "No, no, this is great." I love it. I'm, Throw I'm me dying back out, pull me in. <laughs> and it's awful and I'm loving it. This is fantastic. Yeah. I I love that. It's so perverse. It's so wonderfully perverse. I love yeah, it. Yeah, warriors are just looking back and forth going, what the what is happening? What is going on here? Oh boy. <laughs> this ain't right, you know? This ain't right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um, I can't remember where we were going. Is there anything else that Games Workshop have been doing that you fancy a chat about, Andy? Um, but, 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 uh, what else has been what happening? What else have they been done? I've been doing. I mean, really, it's been dominated by the Eldari release. Recently. Yeah, I mean, we, there is the um, uh, Curse City is coming oh, out. Oh yeah, Curse City is going to have a limited release, isn't it, this month? Yeah, um, it's made to order or something. It is, and then I mean, they've they've explained it because they got a bit of blowback that it was only going to be like made to order. They're yeah. going to have staggered releases of it throughout the year. Which is interesting. I wonder why they're doing it like that. As opposed to just having it on general release. Exactly, yeah. I don't know. It's an odd one, isn't it? I mean, maybe Mm. they can only produce, for some reason, they can only produce limited numbers of it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, At least people are finally going to be able to get this thing. I feel bad for the people who just bought the... Uh, the villains, you know, like um, the villain set, which was like, what, 80 quid or something (laughs) like that? (laughs) Because now be you can get all of it now. Box, uh, yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's it's a bit shitty for them, obviously, but at least it is coming out for the people that want it, and it is yeah. a good set. I mean, I, I don't know whether I'm gonna be able, but... yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to afford it, but I'd like to get it. Well, theoretically, theoretically, you should be able to buy it whenever. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, just, we'll see. just not within the first few weeks. So just maybe you can get it not later. the first few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But I, think, there, I think you and Ray and. Um, a uh, guy from down the road could have a good old time with this. I think we could have a. I mean, this is the kind of thing I often do play when I go to Ray and John's. You know, it's the kind it's of perfect game. game for it. Really, um, you don't need to worry yeah, about doing an army. It's just like this is your it. dude. This is just do they this. They would absolutely love it. I know they oh, would. Yeah. It's their kind of game. Mm. You know, um, and it might be a good gateway for them. I'm determined to get them in. I've got them into D and D, so I'm going to get them into this. Oh yeah, you just need to find the the, the right source to feed them. It's the, the right mod- medicine. That's all I need. I need the model that catches their eye and makes them go wow yeah that's what i need i've already kind of got it with ray he likes nagash oh well he is a handsome boy he loves nagash so it's yeah. like mm-hmm. yeah yeah well th- this is kind of nagashian it is i suppose yeah. it is yeah well as a direct link yeah. It's, it's about the vampires, so there's a direct link. The zombies and skeletons and things. And I suppose this means that the, the rumoured, or the... You remember ages ago when there was like, oh, we're going to be doing updates and expansions for this game. I guess those could ha- can happen now, right? Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm imagining it will eventually be a little bit like the AOS version of Blackstone Fortress, right? Yeah, I'll get one or two minor updates, but probably nothing major. But that's fine. As yeah, long as there are more correct. undead models I can have, I'm, I'm yeah. good with that. Introduce a few new elements into the Cursed City. That'd be sure. fun. You know, expand it a little bit. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. up for that. 
I'm up yeah. for that. I hope it has a little bit more to it than Blackstone Fortress, because Blackstone got a few things, but they didn't <laughs> get a, a massive amount of updates, no. did they? I'd have liked it to have gone deeper. How many I'd did liked... they get? They got the, the they cultist got... upgrade box, they got the they amber got... thingy. That's what they got. The cultists. They got the the uh, the big version of the little robots. They got. Oh, that's right. The amble and the yeah. robotic amble. Um, oh, the robotic one. Yeah. So that's four. Did mm-hmm. they get anything else? There was a chaos marine set to go with it at one point, wasn't there? Was, was there? I believe no, okay. so. Was there not? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. But there wasn't as much as I would have liked. I would have liked yeah. to have seen like a few more bits and pieces in there. Like, sure, a new would hero be... would have been nice because I don't yeah. think they got any new heroes. Well, what about a Drakari hero? <laughs> what about that would, one? Yeah, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Mm. To go with the team. I mean, you've got an Eldari there, so why not a Drakari? Yeah, you know, what about a Drakari witch or something? They they do very well in Blackstone Fortress. I imagine yeah maybe it was too much it, maybe it was too difficult to make a hero that mm-hmm. is balanced and works within the game i don't know maybe. i don't know maybe but it's um it is a great fun game it's one of their best game systems for the get mm. the board games it really works well it's so much fun to play and i, I remember a criticism i heard with um cursory is if you have range you basically win or yeah. you can easily win <laughs> yeah uh, so maybe uh you could make some maybe because you have fast moving units like rats and mm-hmm. stuff but maybe you could have like ghouls and stuff like that to mm-hmm. get in a bit faster Counteract, yeah yeah just so it's like a the game has a, a counter that oh, the problem is you need to make sure that that counter isn't too high because it's a that's it the game, so the game runs itself so. right and so it doesn't neuter those units that rely on range right exactly yeah that's the trick that's yeah the yeah trick. I that's always it's, been it's a problem difficult. That has always been a problem in the fantasy systems, always. Mm. Range is always a problem because it's always killer. Because it's not as pervasive as it is in, you know, in 40k, it's ubiquitous, right? Mm. In AOS and the fantasy systems, it's not. Yeah, it's always it always comes down to does that unit have something that either negates range fire or <laughs> reduces it dramatically? Because right. it's the it's kind of the meta in Total War Warhammer. It's like uh-huh. if you have range, you can massively dominate uh, armies. Right. The only thing that really counters that is if the if the range fire th- that you've got is not armor piercing, right? And the ar- unit's armored, you're gonna have a much rougher time. And then the only thing that counters that is like monstrous units. Like mm-hmm. if you've got monstrous. Trolls or crypt ghouls, units like that, they usually have a decent time smashing through infantry, and because they're usually quite fast. It's something I've heard um, about the Hedonites at the moment, the Hedonites of Slanesh. One of the issues people are having is you can take so many ranged units in that army, and they're really Ah, fast. They're fragile. I mean, they've got no armor at all, you know, so if you Mm. hit them, they die. But they're so fast, and like the Bliss Barb archers, they can run and shoot. Ooh, ooh. which is and they shoot twice so you're probably not gonna catch them unless you've got like cav or something it's fast moving and even tricky, then it's like right? if you take a rough. big blob of 20 of them putting <sighs> they, out 40 they can go shots, that big as well yeah oh woof oh yeah putting out 40 woof. shots each you know a turn it's pretty nasty with minus one armor piercing and whatnot. Yeah. Minus one rend. It's um, with a slow army like the undead, that would be it's, quite it's, hard to deal with. Apart it's from pretty magic, devastating, I right? guess. Yeah, yeah. Oof. pretty devastating. And then, of course, you've got the mounted ones, <laughs> the ones that are riding the big exalted seekers, and they—that's right. They do. Uh, they can. They have a chance of doing mortal wounds with their bows. So, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, right. I mean, there's there's some nasty stuff in that book. Mm. There's some really nasty, naughty little tricks you can pull, um, which is great. I mean, you know, I'm I'm all up for that. But uh, they are fragile, so if you do manage to catch them, they're gonna just melt. They're just gonna die. <laughs> yeah, I guess the idea is just if a lot like t- pick your targets and then dance yeah. around them because that's, that's like maybe monsters monster things that have a lot of hit points yeah again it's the counter for them like a zombie dragon or something akin to that yeah even then that that's a that's a big thing to dedicate to taking down to taking um, down such a small you know such a an ostensibly not that important unit right exactly yeah because you want a big commitment especially when you've got other things running around things like keepers of secrets for example Mm, yeah which are very nasty in the game (laughs) at the moment like very nasty 
man. Things you do. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I can't wait for their their third Ed book to come out. Actually, the Heater Knights, especially since the Maggot Kim one was so good. Has the uh, Fire Slaves one come out? Or is that this uh, week or no, is it that's, last week? It's due, isn't it? It's due it very be. soon. Yeah, I think yeah. it's this week, isn't it? The pre-orders or go uh, pre- you know, it'll, it'll be pre-orders. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it must be because the the box sets came out for them. Uh, the versus box, right? Surely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it must be next week. It's them and are the Ideneth getting a simultaneous release or are they staggered? Are they coming like the week later? I would imagine they do the books the same time. Yeah. Because I don't think they're releasing anything new. So it'll probably no. just be like, here's two books this mm-hmm. week. Yeah. And I'm it makes sense. Sure. I mean, the, the whole fire water thing does make sense, yeah. doesn't it? You yeah. know, thematically. Mm. Um, it'd be really interesting to see what they do with them because they do, they're two armies that do need a real glow up. The, uh, oh, definitely. The fire slayers in particular need a real, mm. a real. Mind you, it looks like they have. I mean, the ability to take an army of those big fiery lizard things. Mm. That's kind of fun. Well, and it kind of works with like, oh, you can take zombie dragons as battle lines and right. the, the, like uh, storm vermin, I think they were yeah. called. So yeah, it, it's like, oh, every other army can take big units of battle right. line. We can do so it now as well. Good why stuff. not? Why yeah, not? Exactly. I'm I'm all for that. I think it's great fun. Yeah. More more armies of big monsters. I'm I'm all up for that in AOS, sure. you know? Yeah. More big monster armies, please. I, I am totally into that. It's fun <laughs> to see and it's uh, a lot less stressful to transport them all. I would imagine. <laughs> I would assume so, anyway. Faster I, to move them, at the very least. I mean, the other thing we know is coming, and this is apparently happening in the summer, there are two battle terms coming for AOS. One of them is Chaos, and one of them is Order. And we don't know what they are. That's right. Wasn't the... Suspe- uh, people were sp- suspecting that it was going to be... Ah, uh, was it Slaves? I don't think it was Slaves to Darkness. I think people were assuming it was going to be a corn one, right? I've heard conflicting rumours about this. Some really? people are saying because they... The the language they use for the chaos book is you'll be causing mischief with this book, and oh. mischief is an old term for a collective a collective of rats. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, a mischief. I was thinking maybe Zinch with kind of yeah. that description. Possible. But if that's the case. That's, yeah. that's a possibility. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, maybe it's the Skaven because remember they are a chaos book. They are. That's true. Yeah, that'd be interesting because that um, I, I remember Griff yes, said that they. Really. Yeah, the last book, I think Ruff said it, it was okay, but it wasn't nearly as like no, impactful so as it could have been. It's just yeah. so old now. It's from the beginning of AOS. It's it's ancient, so they need a glow up. They need a mm. big one. Um, so maybe it is. Maybe it's the Skaven. That'd be fun. And yeah. I like, you know, if it is that, and they did use the Mischief of Rats thing deliberately, then kudos, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, the Order one, I don't know what that is. Sylvaneth, maybe? I mean, it'd be fun if it was um, the the dark elves, whatever they're called. It'd be oh, fun if it was that. Um, they are now. I'm sure. If they... I don't think it will be. No, I think we. I think we're gonna have to wait for a big event for them to come. I think so. Morathai and her lot. When ah, oh. it'd be nice if it was cities they of Sigma, but I don't there. think they're gonna touch that either. Really? No, I don't think so. It's. I think it's. It's going to. I, Sylvaneth are my, would be my guess. That's not a bad call. No, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, and again, I really like the Silver Earth. I'm a mm-hmm. big fan of the Silver Earth, so yeah, go for it, you know. Yeah. Especially if we get like a bit more of their story moving forward, I'd be interested in that. Isn't the the Night Haunt one meant to come out before that? Because didn't we yes. see that that banner? Yeah, the, the Night the Haunt, Haunt one comes due, sooner. The Night mm. Haunt are due basically. Yeah. So um, that is also going to be a great. F- I mean, I, I can't wait for them to do that, and I hope they give them what they need. Yeah, I hope they get fixed. Basically, <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. They need to be a, they need to be an army that works. That's it. They just need yeah. to have a work. They've got the miniatures range. The mm-hmm. miniatures range is one of, I would say, one of the most spectacular in AOS. I think it's so characterful, so interesting. The I, only, the only dead, issue I ever have with it is a lot of them look similar. Yes, they look very samey, don't they? That's that's the only issue with it. And but that's I it. Kind They're great of like, though. I like the cohesion of them, though. I like the yeah. way they look all together. They're like massive specters. I think it works really well. I think my my issue is that because most people obviously paint the robes all the same color, yes. it just becomes kind of a, a, a mass, mass of whatever that color is. And <laughs> yeah. I think visually, it's it's not as like distinct as say like the Heat Knights, which have very mm-hmm. distinct shapes to each of the yes. units, and you can just la- glance at there and go, oh, it's that. And it's identify that, it's them, that. yeah, so yeah. they are very distinct, aren't they, you know? Yeah. Same in the Maggotkin, you know, they're, they're, every yeah. unit is very, very, very distinct. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so that's so, my only real visual issue. I, I like the night haunts generally, even they're a, <laughs> they're a, a bit. I think they're I think they are difficult to paint well. I think yes. you can paint them, but I think getting them to look. Re- I I I'm rarely happy with the paint jobs I give my night haunt. I think um, I think you need to do a lot of crazy like um airbrushing like i've seen yeah. some really nice airbrushing with sh- shades and blending and all that kind mm-hmm. of high quality stuff that make them look fantastic mm-hmm. uh, i think if you what i can do it's not they'll just be like ah they're fine they, yeah. they, they'll do right they'll do <laughs> uh, but they don't have that wow factor which i think you can get easier with some of the other armies i mean funnily enough the the scheme i use for my thousand sons would work really well on them. <laughs> that spectral thing would work really well on them Kind of the the problem is that because of the robes on the top, there's not a lot of um, detail to dry brush. Dry brush, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? That's so you yeah. need to work on getting detail into them. That that's the issue, I think. Yeah, there's, yeah. It's there's a lot of smooth areas, so you can't really dry brush. And I don't think I I really I, I'll tell you I I really don't like the technical hex rays flame on them. I've had it on for a oh, while, and yeah. the more I look at it, I, I think because they're not that detailed, uh-huh. it doesn't look nearly as good as what Games Workshop do, which is like they do the whole wet Bolts. blending and stuff yeah. like that, which makes it look a lot nicer and smoother. While with the the technical paints, it comes out a bit. Um, it's like when you use contrast paints on yeah. Space Marines or something like that. It's it's it just, not as nice. It's not it just doesn't work, right? Yeah, because there's there's too there's many nothing flat for surfaces. It to, right, there's nothing for it to flow into. Yeah. 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 And emphasize. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. So yeah, it's a tricky one that. Yeah, they're they're a tricky army. It's surprising that they made uh, an army that was not desperately easy to play, and I would uh, say fairly difficult to play as a starter set one for like people uh, yeah. to get into it. That is interesting, isn't it? You would have thought they'd have like really put some a bit of effort into that, making yeah. them a bit more oomph. Yeah, it's why it's why like I think technically I don't like the box set because it's really basic in terms of the armies. But AO, uh, but Age of Sigma Stormcast versus Corn. That's a good mm-hmm. box set because it's two armies that you just basically push together and they yeah, bounce right. off and each other. Yeah, right. And they fight and they are equivalent, you know, they in yeah, terms of toughness much. and ability. I mean, the Blades of Corn are a nasty bunch. Yeah, they're, they're a good uh, equivalent because there's a bit more to the Stormcast, but it's not mm-hmm. like they're the Space Marines, aren't they? So it's yeah. just like. They they just play. They, there's the yeah. standard that you play with. They've got a little bit of everything, while the corn guys are just melee focused, and you just yeah. push them forward. It's you like, just that's good. chuck them forward, and they do the business. They kill things. Not knowing much about the cruel boys, I couldn't say what the comparison is there. I imagine they're probably a little bit easier than the night haunt. I, I would assume. Yeah, um, the cruel boys are interesting. Sure. And How got do they good... play? Do you know? Sneaky. They've got a lot of dirty tricks, a lot of really... The book is great. The book Mm. is really, really good. They've got a lot of dirty tricks they can pull where they do things that the enemy is not going to expect. Oh, so kind of gene stealer culty. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Okay. But they've also got very decent because they, you know, they are they're kind of like upper goblinoid, so they do have like toughness and strength as well. They're quite aggressive. Hmm. That yeah, they're an interesting bunch. They're the they're the more sort of cunning, sneaky orcs, I suppose. Yeah, rather than the again, you just push them forward. The more brutish ones. Them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like them. I like them a lot, actually. Mm. The cruel boys, and I'm not really an orcoid guy, you know. I mean, I, I like them fine, but I'm not going to play them. Yeah, I think I prefer goblins and trolls. Mm-hmm. I think they're more my jam if I'm going to go green skin. Yeah, I, I like the sneakiness. I've got mm. to admit, I do like the sneakiness. And I'm sure they'll be getting, a, you know, eventually their third ed book somewhere down the line. You'd hope so, yeah. But yeah, uh, beyond that, I can't think of anything else that's going on. I think that's a, that's a good style. podcast there. I think I that's, think that's it. So, I think it's fairly substantial myself. Yeah. So, is there anything you'd like to pimp out, Andy, before we uh, draw a curtain over this one? Uh, sure, you can find me on YouTube and Twitch as Decay Dandy. On Twitch as uh, Decay Dandy as well, if you want to uh, watch me play Elden Ring, which I'll yeah. be doing tonight. Uh, and most <laughs> nights at 11 o'clock UK time. Probably most nights for a long while. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that might be the case. I was like, I kind of want to balance it out between finishing Super Robot Wars and Total uh-huh. War Warhammer. It's like, no, I'm really... In, I'm, I'm really upset because I, I'm only playing Elden Ring when I'm streaming because I don't uh-huh. really want to... I don't want to have any of the surprises, so I want it right. to be like a natural want, reaction. Yeah. 
of course. Kind of like <laughs> with what you're doing in your videos, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah. don't, I don't. So it's I'm kind of there waiting every like day. Like I, I did, can play Elden uh, Ring now, but I gotta wait until eleven o'clock. Sheesh. Yeah, I did make the joke on the video I recorded the other day. I may as well just change this channel to the Elden Elegy channel. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> For the longest time, it's going to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. It's a good game. So <laughs> it's if it was terrible. Then yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. No, it's a stunner. <laughs> it's a stone cold stunner. Um, and as for myself, guys, it's the same as usual. You can find me knocking about on the exaggerated elegy channel where I am too playing. Elden Ring at the yeah. Moment. Most people are. A lot yeah, of people are. Most the now. internet does seem to be like generally pervaded by Elden Ring at the moment, oh, which yeah. given, you know, everything else it might be pervaded by, that's fine. Um, you can find links to all of my published work over at strangeplaygrounds.com most recently the Born in Blood series from uh, Perpetual Motion Machine Publications, two volumes of uh, very, very nasty short stories there. Also mm. had a short story published recently in a um, an anthology that I'm really pleased to be a part of called The Book of Queer Saints um, there will hopefully be links to all of those knocking about here somewhere uh, apart from that if you do fancy coming and having a chat you can find me over at enigmatic elegy on twitter and with that andy thanks so much as per usual it's been a pleasure catching up and uh yeah. chat at a games workshop and uh thank you guys for listening to us witter on for god knows how long until next time bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.